Hola, mi gente, and welcome to Stays Crunchy and Milk. If you have questions or comments, queries, statements, or otherwise, we have multiple ways to be reached. Twitter is, of course, the best way for those that need instant gratification, and the show's Twitter feed is at Skimpod. That is S-K-I-M-P-O-D. That's where I like to fight. For the more patient amongst you, the email address for the show is podcast at statescountrymilk.com. That's crunchy being spelled with a K. We're available via Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, Spotify, and a partridge in a pear tree. And of course the website, statescrunchingmilk.com. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share the show. And a band plays on here at Skim, and to that end we provide you a pod podcast. A musical discussion podcast built on a hip-hop foundation. And you know what? It's dope. Our personal Twitters are Tatum216, Lunchbox2099, your host, the Internet's Tayrell713, and me? Well, damn it, I'm the real ODP. The way I see it, you probably free from ages one to four. Around the age of five, you ship the wage for your body to be stored. They promise education, but really they che- give you tests and scores. And they predict in prison population by who scores the lowest. And usually the lowest scores the poorest, and they look like me. And every day on the evening news, they feed you fear for free. And you so numb, you watch the cops choke out a man like me. Until my voice goes from a shriek to a whisper, I can't breathe. And you can sit in the house on the couch and watch it on TV. The most you give is a Twitter rant and call it a tragedy. But truly the travesty, you've been robbed of your empathy. Replace it with apathy. I wish I could magically. Fast forward to the future so you can face it and see how fucked up it'll be. I promise I'm honest, they coming for you the day after they coming from me. I'm reading Chomsky. I'm reading Bukasi. I'm laying low for a week. I said something on behalf of my people and popped up in, in WikiLeaks. Thank God that I'm covered. The devil was smothered. And you know that evil don't sleep. Dick, Greg- Dick-, Dick-, Dick Gregory gave me a couple of secrets before he lay down in his grave. All of us serve the same masters. All, all of us serve the same masters. All of us nothing but slaves. Never forgetting the story of Jesus. The hero was killed by the state. Those, uh... Precious lines are from One Killer Mike. That's from the song uh, Walking in the Snow by uh, Run the Jewels on the latest release from them, Run the Jewels 4, RCJ4. And them lyrics fucking touch my soul. And uh, it's funny how I Can't Breathe, which was Eric Garner in 2015, is I Can't Breathe, George Floyd in 2020. Because shit don't ever fucking change and I'm kind of weary of it. It has been now a good week plus of uh, protest and cops rioting. Because I'm not calling I'm not calling these riots on uh, anybody but these cops. I see these cops reacting. Now, I ain't gonna lie to you. I saw in downtown Cleveland what happened, which was weird as fuck. Because we had this peaceful protest over by the Justice Center that, again, took a wild-ass turn. But then we got these little just hooligans running up and down Euclid, busting up windows. And I'm like, hmm... I don't think y'all was down with that squad over there that was built. There was the church pastors and the Black Lives Matter. I think y'all was just some wild ass motherfuckers thinking y'all was about to so set some shit off. And I'm salty off of that, but also at the same time, man, mm, your cupcake shop versus my right to live. I'm going to take my right to live over your cupcake shop every fucking time. So I get it. Y'all mad. I get it. Y'all like, oh man, I can't believe they breaking shit and, and smashing shit. But you know what, man? Sometimes it's the only way y'all fucking listen. So we smash shit. And that's just got to be what it is. But the caveat, the caveat to that would be, I like me and my girlfriend had a discussion the other night, and we were talking about. I'm like, uh, she was saying some of this stuff seems way too organized. I'm like, well, maybe it's flash mobs. She's like, it's not a flash mob. I'm like, I think it's definitely flash mobs because all of them seem to be covering their face in certain ways. They move certain ways. They all have backpacks. They all have skateboards. Right. And they all... Have, yeah, I noticed that shit, like, too. It's like all these videos I'm seeing, it's all white kids in masks with skateboards. It, it's it's, it, the it's way, like they have a the uniform. It's orchestrated. Yeah, it's like a uniform. And, like, how many people are, like, go out to a riot with skateboards? And they all have the same thing. And it's in different cities. And it's all different ways. I'm like, nah, that's organized. That's definitely organized. And I'm like, it was just way too many videos seeing the same thing. It's just like, that's a setup. Well, like I said, the, the, the protests themselves, the rioting portion of the program seemed to end it probably like, I'm saying, I want to say Sunday. 
You know what I'm saying? Every protest I've seen since has been very peaceful, and the people riding are the cops. They just start popping. They just start pushing. They start gassing. They start uh, pepper spraying because they can't even come close to thinking that they shouldn't be able to just murder with impunity. How dare you not let us just murder how we want to? Fuck that. I'm hitting you with rubber bullets. And that shit is such a fucking misnomer, man. I don't know if y'all have seen pictures of rubber bullets. They can kill somebody. Them bitches is not bullets in any way, shape, or form. They are projectiles. Yeah, they, they are bullets. They look like bullet bill. They bill <laughs> From Mark. Yeah, I saw like the diagram where it says like they're supposed to be shot off the ground so that they bounce and take some speed off the trajectory. So yeah, that it doesn't kill somebody, but the yeah. way that a lot of them are shooting them, they're shooting them directly at people. Which, like, if hit in the head with one of those things, it can break. Like, it can create shrapnel when it breaks your skull, and then you have fucking bone pieces that go into your brain and kill you. Multiple multiple yeah. people have lost eyes through this because they are aiming not just aiming at them; they're aiming at people's heads with these motherfuckers. At, at people's head. Like I seen a video uh, just a little bit earlier. The dude had like you can see. It was just like the size of an Oreo yeah. on his head, like, and it was like I'm I'm having bleeding on my brain, and it was just like a lump, like the diameter of an Oreo on his yeah. head, like the perfect size of one of these. Books. So at this point, is that the guy who's in uh, critical condition for brain That's, damage, uh, or is that I, another guy? I don't guy? know if he's in critical condition because I mean he was telling the story, but um, very well might have been. Well, like yeah, you said, I, I thought I was the only one who noticed the skateboard thing. I was like, "Man, what the fuck is with skateboards and window busting?" It's like they go together like lamb and tuna yeah. fish. <laughs> like a lamb and yeah, tuna fish. Yeah, like it was not, you know, breaking windows is like um, <laughs> is is been. I seen. I, w- I would go ahead and say I seen five different videos, five different cities. All using skateboards to break windows, to break cop cars down. Yeah, I saw one last and night a- where, like, it was a kid with a skateboard, white kid, busting out the windows of a store, and a group of black kids come up to him and they like grab the skateboard out of his hand and shove him away. It's like, what is yeah, he doing? Yeah, like, yeah, quit that shit. Like, no, like we're not doing that shit. And then the white kids almost like, it was like he got caught doing something he what he knew he wasn't supposed to be doing, like. Like you said, like the setup thing, where like his plan, his yeah. plan went south, and now he's like, "Oh fuck, what do I do?" This yeah. wasn't in the script. Yeah, and it was like he was with a couple other dudes, and then it was like, "All right, come on, let's go." Mm-hmm. Whereas I've seen videos of white people with walking around with hammers, smashing windows. I saw a video of New York police officers be, breaking down their one of their own cop cars, like literally just pulling the doors off of them, smacking the windows. I, I saw one of them, yeah, knocking the windows out of a store. Like they're just all standing there with no one around, Billy clubbing out the window. Yeah, and it's like I'm like over and over and over again. I keep watching them do this. What I keep seeing in a lot of cities is they'll call a curfew at a, at a time. They'll set they'll send a notification out the curfew is one time. Then they'll immediately change the curfew to another time. But they won't send a notification out. And so people are just being caught out in the street after curfew. I saw a video of uh, what looked like LAPD literally driving after a group of people shooting rubber bullets out the windows at people. It was like watching them do a drive by, watching windows smash all around them because, again, they're not aiming. They're just, they're just letting fly. I saw a video where it was two guys standing on the street talking. Like, not many. There was literally, just, they were the only two on the street. Now, I was told that this was after the curfew thing, but they were just standing on the street talking to each other, mm. and there was like a hundred cops approaching down the street, and then all of a sudden you just hear pop, 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 and the one dude grabs his stomach. Yeah. Like, it wasn't, there was no protest, there was no protest even happening. There's yeah. nothing, no no demonstration, no, no crimes being committed, I guess, unless like they're breaking the curfew that was just, like you said, implemented that they might not even have known it was curfew time. But also, and they that, get, that's and they not get something. Rubber bullet shot for it. Yeah, uh, you know, you standing on the block is not something to get a rubber bullet for. Uh, there was a woman in Minnesota who was in her house, and they were popping. Like she was on her porch, and they were popping toward her porch. The, 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 oh, yeah, the man in DC who had like seventy protesters <clears throat> who had to take Center seventy protesters property. in his house because curfew had happened, and then the cops was trying to break in his house, and they were telling the news that oh that uh, they 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 have a. You know, ran into this man's house and he's in danger. So they got, and the man was like, No, nah, I'm not in danger. I've invited you into my home to keep you safe until after curfew. You're welcome to stay tonight. You're welcome to stay in my home. 
And like I said, it's it's the riot at this point are police officers. Police officers is acting the goddamn fool and uh shocked. Did you, you see the one where there was an Australian news crew broadcasting yeah, that shit live me up. and the cop just runs up on the cameraman and just starts punching him? Yeah. And they saw, saw it. they're broadcasting live to, you know, their nation, or at least, yeah. you know, their local affiliate or whatever, and, and this is what they see. This is what they see. We're like what fucking used to happen in, like, Iran and China and shit now. We are that now. It's become the whole... F- what we used to condemn. What we used to condemn in the, on those countries. Yeah. And it's just like, it's, it's, it's absolute chaos. And, uh, like I said, they've arrested thousands just to avoid arresting, like, you know, their own. Four. I'll say four, but I want the so, motherfuckers in Louis, Louisville taken care of. You know what I'm saying? So it's, that's three more. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I want at least seven arrested, and, and I want them arrested soon. And then, actually, another one in Louisville, because they killed somebody uh, down there who wasn't even protesting. They were shooting. But they was busting wild. And a man who who, who they sp- the community spoke of, who was saying, had owned a barbecue restaurant, would feed the cops for free in his town. For free, yeah. Get, get catch the stray from Nate, because they, they, they just popping wild. Again, it, the 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 time is like I said, I, it's you know what I'm saying. I, this whole time, and you know what I'm saying, off the rip from the beginning, I've been saying 2020 vision, and 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 this is gonna be a year of change and so forth and so on. And and, and in my mind, I thought of that as positive, but maybe that's what the where, where the fuck up was. Maybe the change that is coming is 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 potent and strong and a big fucking deal, but it's not as easy as. I lost some weight or I got a new job or I got a raise or something like that. It is indeed the world has to be altered at this point. Because like I said, they're protesting all over the globe, man, right now about this. And I mean, I guess Girl Scout hair was wrong. Yeah, I guess, you know, the, 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 re- the revolution in this case is on TV. I mean, like I told you this shit years ago on the show. Like, I mean, what have I been saying since I've known you guys? That like the shit that we've talked about ad nauseum for years now wasn't going to happen during our lifetime and I didn't say that shit to be like callous or like a dick or anything it's the reality of the situation once people are adults they're generally set in their ways for the most part like it's the younger generations that are going to see the the fruits of the discord and all the shit that comes of all this like we're going to have to live through the hard times and hopefully they get to see the better times that's just the reality of the situation yeah, you. You know, it, it takes um, everything they say. It takes about twelve years to change. Yeah, it took a, it, it took a so, long time before the, the Civil Rights Act was passed. It took a lot of marching. It took a lot of dying. It took a lot of protests, and it took a lot of everything to get things changed. And that's just, that's just and that's how change is. Change is incremental, and that's why a lot of people, you know, what I'm saying, uh, you know, what I'm saying who who lean left are like. I don't want Joe Biden because I don't want incremental change. I want all my change right now. I want a full fucking play to change. And I'm like, it's just not how it functions. It never has. And in fact, yeah, the, you get the change. It's been in place for so long that like, you, it's not going to change overnight. Well, that's know? the thing. Like I said, you get change in the fact that, like I said, Barack Obama came in and uh, gay marriage became legal under, on his watch and uh, so forth and so on. Things, things, things did change. But because things changed, we always get this, this, this flashback. But motherfuckers is like that's too much change. It's happened too fast. The, the, the step we back. have to we have to step back and, and whatever whatever. But after the, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like Barack like punched the world, and then the world was like uh, was well uh, no, I guess um, yeah everybody was waiting for for the punch back, and you you step you got to step back first when you before you you put your hip into it when you punch it yeah because um and so I, I, I it's a bunch of bullshit. I, I, I am hopeful that After that civil- that, that uh, soon, and I guess God dang, soon in uh in the global universal sense of soon, you know what I'm saying? Shit is change is glacial, man. You know what I'm saying? And it does take a, a long while to get there. But seeing the entirety, the people in 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 Dublin, people in fucking London, people in New Zealand, people the world over. Marching in solidarity, speaking about their own police, uh, uh, you know, problems. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's, I guess, it's a huge problem with uh, Brazilian police murdering people in, in, in their neck of the woods. So the world is like policing the way we we do it right now is on some bullshit. And 
and maybe some chi- some things have to change there. And then we got this little bitch in the White House, Mister Bunker Boy himself. Oh my God! You know he came out and said he was uh, inspecting the bunker. At least I read that somewhere, and maybe that was jokes oh, or whatever. I, yeah, that could that could have been some comedy, but it's like work. So, you know, you know the, the, what is the what is the adage? Uh, better be better better to be thought a fool while silent. And or then to open your you mouth, open your mouth, or, uh, open your or, mouth, and leave no doubt. Now we was we all thought he was in the bunker because you know what I'm saying whatever whatever, but we ain't know this nigga was in the bunker. We was just laughing like ha ah, bunker boy, and then his bitch ass came out the mouth was like I, I was, I was, the I was in the bunker just making sure the bunker was safe. I'm making sure everything down the bunker all right. You know what I'm saying? It's like bro. When, when I when I heard about that today, I heard something too that he like. Tried to say some snide ass comment about it, saying that Obama left it in like complete disarray or some shit. I, I, didn't, I didn't see. It. Like, I had a busy day at work, so like I didn't have a lot of time to newsline read today. But that was what I was told. And, and the way that dude talks, I wouldn't be surprised if it was accurate. Obama left the bunker in disarray. <laughs> yeah. There's enough. There's not enough fuck yous for this fucking president of ours. My bunker didn't look good. My macaroni and cheese was not on the shelf where I thought it would be. I had to go check this bunker to make sure it was straight. Three years, four years into my administration. Piss off, dog. I'm not for the sh- I'm, I'm not for the fuck shit. I'm just not for the fuck shit anymore. Hey, I'm, you know what I, I haven't done? I'm convinced. <laughs> I'm pretty much convinced that anything he says, like I'm inspecting the bunker and oh, uh, I would run into a school. If there was shooting going on and all that crazy shit, he says that uh, everyone else, everyone else with a brain goes, that's fucking idiotic. He's not. It's not for us. It's not for the people who call him on the carpet because we know the, we know the game. And I don't think he's stupid enough to, to, to or narcissistic enough. He may be, but I don't think he's stupid or narcissistic enough to think that he's convincing anyone but his most, um, uh, f- ardent. Uh, our, yes, Arden. That's the thing, word I was looking for. Thank you. Most ardent followers. They're just because they'll just eat up anything he says. It's like, oh my god, this president's so great. He knows how to inspect a bunker. I could have him inspect my bunker. Make him make bunkers great again. You fucking idiot. So hello and welcome to Stage Crunch and Milk. It's episode three fifty four. If you keep it count, I'm joined, of course, by the man of a thousand nicknames. The artist formerly known as Chessfield Rock was the two with sixes on Tatum. Cool Dr. Money in the house. <laughs> We're also joined by a man who knows that if all lives matter, then certainly black lives matter? Slushbox 2099. I don't think you should have actually said that and put that on my name. <laughs> but now that you went there, I will say this. The reading comprehension of some of the people I see online... Is severely lacking, and I weep for our school system because <laughs> I saw Robert Griffin III put out a tweet a couple days ago where he was trying to explain to people <coughs> about like why saying all lives matter is stupid when people say Black Lives Matter, and the amount of people underneath that tweet and that were quote tweeting him that didn't understand what the fuck his sentences were saying. That immediately turned on him. We're calling him, uh, I mean, stuff that I probably should not say. Everything but a child of God is what my mama used to say. <laughs> I, I was like, he's on your side, people. Like, if you read what he wrote, he's agreeing that it's Black Lives Matter and people shouldn't say All Lives Matter. But because, like, you saw that phrase, All Lives Matter, your eyes went red, you're like a bull in a china shop, and you want to fucking attack this man, and that's not what he's fucking saying. He tried to clarify right after, and it was like, I didn't go back to it after that. Because yeah. I only saw it, because I don't follow him. It got re- it got tweeted into my feed by a dude who quote tweeted him with a hotep meme. <laughs> And I'm just like, what the fuck? You guys just, like, I went into the comments, and it was like, 95% were just like, how could you delete this? The audacity. This is such bullshit. And then there were a couple people like, can't you all fucking read? <laughs> like I said, I mean, well, you know what? Let me finish my... Uh, we also have the last Sorry. of the, the, the Golden Cokies. Sorry for yelling. The Suburban Puerto Rican. 
It's the real ODP, the homie Gabe. Gabe, are you there? Your image disappeared. There we go. I am. Yes, I am here. And I've calmed down. I've calmed myself down after making myself angry. Make bunkers Look. great again. <laughs> Fuck you. So, so <laughs> what, 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 I, when I say that if, if all lives matter and black lives exist within the confines of all, then black lives must matter too, correct? It's relatively easy, people. The math is real simple in this regard. But y'all just want to hear when you hear it, when not y'all, you know what I'm saying, my, my folk, but they just want to hear when they hear Black Lives Matter, they want to hear that must mean my life don't matter. And bro, yeah, the, the amount of people that can't comprehend the, the fucking phrase and its yeah. meaning is just, it, it's dumbfounding to me. Whereas I argue like, to the contrary. I think they fully understand it. I think they say this to, de- to degrade and to de- and take down a movement. They think by saying all lives matter, they are somehow taking the power, taking some power away from Black Lives Matter. You are not, but you do seem like an idiot. And and, and so, of course, we just all look at you like, God, you're a moron. But well, I think what I, what I think it is, honestly, and this is coming from a white guy, is ignorance to the situation at hand, uh, whether it be willful or not. Because I, and I say this with all sincerity. There are a lot of things that have been said and shown over the internet this last 10 days or whatever it's been now, at the time of this recording, that like even I, I wasn't aware of, as mm-hmm. far as uh, society and history and things of that nature. I, I don't want to go down a road and say, like, I'm a woke white guy, because I'm, I'm not. I'm just a white dude who tries to be nice to people, and I, I do what I can, but it's like even like I'm, a, I'm oblivious to certain things, you know, whether I choose to be or not, which it's not really a choice. I'm just, I have, I've seen it from my lens because that's how my life was growing up. And it is, it's difficult to see things from other people's lenses. Cause you all like, I think you just assume that other people, unless like you think you're better than other people, which I don't think I'm better than anybody, but I think you just assume that everybody else's situation was the same when in reality it's not. And some of the things that like I've, I've seen people say, um, funny way to say that, but when I say that, I'm talking about text. And I, I've, I've watched videos. Like, um, there's something that like I feel like we should get into here in a little bit. But like, I, I saw Shannon Sharp stuff from this morning about the Drew Brees situation, and uh, he, he went into a lot of detail. What I thought very eloquently and with a lot of passion, and you know, it was like history about um, black people in, in, in the military. And I saw a video on Instagram uh, yesterday, I believe, where it was um, talking about, like, systemic racism and uh, basically generational wealth and how the system was designed to, you know, keep black people poor. And, uh, you know, like, it was one of the things, like, I was aware of it, but not to the extent of how the system worked, per se. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't really think of the... Uh, situations and the fallouts that come from that kind of thing. And uh, so I would say that I have personally become more aware of of the world around me over the last week than I previously was. Yeah. I kind of feel like one of the benefits of all this happening now is people have time. Like, before it was just like, I'm at work. My kids is fucking up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. This dude got choked in the street, you know, five years ago. But I mean, it wasn't in my purview. But when you have like, you know, when you can literally sit down and watch CNN all day, and then be like, oh shit, I never heard of that. Let me go look it up, or I have time to look at this video because my boss ain't down my back, and I can, I can do some reading, or I can take some, I can take ten minutes out to read this article. Mm-hmm. It's like. People literally have time. So, um, it's enraging, like, um, that, you know, that it took long, uh, I mean, long to do it, but at the same time, it's beautiful that, like, all this stuff happened at once. It's like, you know what? I have time. I do understand this better. Even, like, um, Rhett from Good Mythical Morning, like, I didn't even think about this kind of stuff just a couple years ago. And now, I mean, it's 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 eye opening to people. Yeah, yeah, but- yeah. I think I think I was blessed in that this is stuff that we've discussed on this show for multiple years now, 
So it's not like it was the concept of all this was foreign to me. So I'm not getting as big of a culture shock as some of my other white contemporaries, I would say. Um, but I think that was part of also why I didn't go down the, the rabbit hole on the internet of posting a black picture and making a bunch of posts and all that because it's like this is stuff that I've been doing with you guys for years now it's like I I didn't know what posting a, an image f- 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 what would do for me and like if it, it if I should have I apologize I just I, I didn't know what it would have done it's not like I got a shit ton of followers on Instagram anyway nah you had a whole, ep- you yeah, had a whole, whole was- episode that came out today that was representative of a black square you were not you did your part you are do. you have done your part you'll continue to do your part and uh and i i heard so many different like don't put the black square put the black square. Was, it was just like oh man i was just like okay i'm glad you said that because it's like i i didn't want to tear it down but it seems so fucking poorly organized in a way where it's like i just i didn't even know shit about it until like i log on and i see a couple of them and then it's like Half the people are saying are yelling at people for not posting the square, and then the other half of people are yelling at people for posting the square because they're fucking posting it wrong with hashtags and shit, and they're clouding up the feeds and like it was like it was the most disorganized shit. Like the the intention was pure and the heart was in the right place, but the execution was bad. I didn't see anybody get yelled at for not having the square. What I saw was they were they asked people, hey, if you don't use the Black Lives Matter hashtag on the black square. Because uh, it, it it can overwhelm a system that we need to right now trying to you know what I'm saying get money to places get people bailed out and so forth and so on. So yeah, just like the, use, hashtag, so the square was for it, it, the, was Blackout Tuesday. What they wanted you to use on the square. But now, when I say I saw people getting yelled at for not posting it, it was on feeds of like uh, like say wrestlers or like Barstool Sports type accounts and stuff like that okay. where like they were posting their normal lives like the, like the square thing wasn't happening and uh-huh. then there was people in, in the comments on that like hey why haven't you posted the square why are you still posting normally don't you know today's blackout Tuesday? shit like that you know and I wonder and I wonder who was trying to ride on Barstool Sports of all things who already has a kind of shifty reputation you know what I'm saying so hmm Come on, bro. They wasn't going to do that. A lot of people did do that. A lot of people, uh, I was, I know it seems weird to say this, but okay. There's a podcast I listen to called The Giant Bombcast. It's a video game podcast. It It is one of the things I try to, they, they are kind of the podcast I try to live up to in that we put out an episode every week because they put out an episode every week. One of their uh, founders passed away some years back. And the Tuesday after he passed away, they did a show anyway. Because that is that is how committed to putting putting a show out every week they have been, and like I said, I truly have tried to follow that for us to put a show out every week, uh, no no matter what, you know what I'm saying? And they on Tuesday was like, nothing coming out of Giant Bomb today. What I need y'all to do is uh, not bother trying to listen to us. I need y'all to listen to people uh, who are who are trying to give voice to those who are voiceless. And they put up, uh, you know, links and stuff and, and, uh, and been doing some fundraising stuff. In fact, they got a fundraiser that, that, that starts a fundraising kind of machine going that they start back up tomorrow for Black Lives Matter and bail places, you know, opportunities and so forth and so on. So it's, it's a lot of people I've seen doing it. Do, we got a lot of people, a lot of companies or, 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 or people or whatever doing it that I was like, right on. You know what? You know what I'm saying? That's major from you. Not because I, because I don't think John Bomb is a... Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, would be down for the people. It's just, it's like I said, it goes against, it goes against everything they would, they would, uh, they have normally done. You know what I'm saying? Even when, like I said, even in the face of death, they have made it, got a show, put a show out. And so it was, uh, it was so heartening, I guess, not even just heartening to see that, see that happen. Uh, so you were talking about wrestlers, oddly enough, of uh, uh, Xavier Woods, Austin Creed or whatever his name is, uh, was on a uh, kind of funny games daily today. And pointed out how uh, how unfortunate that a lot of people that he has uh, trusted, depended on, and, and 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 thought you know were his people have just been real shitty during this. And he's a he's a professional wrestler uh, for those who may not know that. And uh, did he name names? I'm sorry, what? Did he name names? No, no, of course not. Because no, no, he got good sense. You, you know, what I'm saying you don't want to get kicked out the biz on some bullshit. <laughs> Well, one one guy yeah. put out a tweet that he's been getting attacked for. 
uh, a wrestler. Yeah. Uh, the me is. <laughs> no. <laughs> not, not that I'm aware of. Um, no, it was a guy. Um, he was a former Marine. And uh, his name, his wrestling name is Jackson Riker. He, he literally just recently got called up to their Friday show, SmackDown, within like the last month or so. Okay. Um, and he, he put up something the other day that was basically like, uh, God bless America, you know, gargling Trump's dick and, you know, his wrestling catchphrase. And uh, a lot of his, his contemporaries were like, you know, you're bugging, shit's not sweet, how the fuck could you? Like, this hurts my heart. Like, and I'm just thinking, like, how the fuck are people, like, gonna, like, go work with this dude now? And it's yeah. the same situation that, like, Drew Brees has now found himself in. Yeah. Where, like, I was watching, I spent, like, the, la- the, the, the hour before we hopped on here catching up on the morning, morning uh, talk show stuff. And um, for those who don't know, by, uh, which I'm sure it's, like, nobody by now, everyone I'm sure knows, but Drew Brees was being interviewed by Yahoo Finance, of all things. And they asked him about uh, the kneeling uh, that Colin Kaepernick did a couple years ago. And Drew Brees very defiantly, like, went on a like minute long tangent about like not respecting people who kneel for the flag, and uh, that did not sit well with a lot of people, including Drew Brees' teammates. So there's yeah. been a lot of uh, "fuck you, Drew Brees" in the media the last 24 hours, which um, understandably so from those people who, right now who don't agree with what he said. Um, I, I feel like. Drew Brees gives off the feeling of a guy who, at his core, is a good man, but in this regard, is being ignorant to the climate of the world that he currently lives in, and is not being understanding of other people's situations. Yeah. Which is how it came across to me. But, I don't know Drew Brees. He could be a dick for all I know. Yeah. Um, But... I don't know. It seems like he's done a lot of charity work and try to do good for people over the years, but it's like on this issue at this time, it's like you put you put a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. Well, uh, one of the funniest things I heard out of this Drew Brees thing was uh, I don't not I, it wasn't someone famous, but they said I will give ten dollars uh, to a charity of choice for each um, each defensive. Uh, Player who sacks Drew Brees and celebrates by taking it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the, th- the thing about it is, it's like he pissed off and hurt people on his own team. Yeah, like people he has, yeah. people he has to throw the ball to are mad at him right now, and like that, that, like let Lyman who have to keep uh, keep people off his ass. Yeah, it's uh, like what uh, happens if it's like uh, the Adam Sandler longest yard remake, where it's like. You know, say the, say the Saints are getting whooped at halftime, and they're just like, you know what, fuck this. And they come out for the second half, and, like, that first drop back, they just don't block, and Drew Brees gets, like, clobbered by, like, four 300-pound dudes. Yeah. Oh, sorry, dog, we didn't we didn't know the snap count. You know, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did not see his apology. What would you say his apology was uh, like? It was a tap dance around the issue at hand. It was one of those, like, I'm sorry you're upset by what I said, but I said what I said. But I said that shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, then, that's not going to do it. No, but, you know what? <laughs> so much deference to a piece of fabric uh, that we're not willing to give to certain people's lives. Explain that. It's just not even what the anthem is for. It's not even what the anthem is about. He, they, people have just decided... That the anthem it must be about the military. Well, that's just not what it's about. The anthem is supposed to be about the country as a whole. And I would think if if in your country everybody's not being treated fairly, then that anthem's probably not doing its job. That that was why I was um, intrigued and uh, very taken aback at what Shannon Sharp said about the whole thing this morning okay. when I saw the video where he talked about the history of black people in the military and how they were treated when they were when they were coming home and essentially how white people rope doped them into fighting saying that they would give them their freedom at the end of the fighting and then just never did it 
or how like they would go to war, come back, and weren't allowed to wear their uniform, but they could be arrested or killed, and they weren't allowed to live in certain areas, and uh, just giving like putting everything on the line and getting nothing out of it. Whereas you know they did the same fighting and same gam- risking that white people did. Whereas white people got to come back essentially as heroes, yeah. and black people got to come back and still be treated as second class citizens when they were out there doing the same shit. Yeah, they the, the black people, black uh, soldiers who came back from World, uh, from World War Two, uh, weren't even allowed to uh, take part in the GI Bill. GI Bill yeah. is you know what I'm saying basically uh, you know what I'm saying money that the most white people who came back from the war used to go buy a house and start a family and begin building generational wealth. And we weren't even given that opportunity. And uh, yeah, that was one of the things he brought up, which like that that's something that like may have been covered in school, but it's certainly something that like I don't you know readily remember. Yeah. So it's like I was hearing it almost for the first time, you know, because like in school, like they'll, they'll tell you bad shit, but they'll tell you like bad shit from a long ass time ago or bad shit that happened someplace else. Yeah, they don't go. They they they, they tend to gloss over the bad shit that happened recently. Like they're trying to make you forget that like. People are fucking up and been fucking up and are still fucking up. Yeah, you know. Uh, history's told by the victors. But that's that's bullshit. Because well, it's bullshit. It's we were bullshit. we we were but we it's... as in black people were were a part of the victorious team, and still made to be like nah. It's like that's that's just bullshit, and and like I said, I, I well not like I said, I'm just it it's it. it Platitudes, yeah, fuck Drew Brees, yeah, fuck Donald Trump, blah blah blah. But yeah, fuck the world ain't getting me nowhere. But people in these streets, people in these streets, taking it to the streets, marching, marching in arms. There was a protest up the road from my house uh, the other night that that uh, uh, that I was concerned about because this girl talked about I'm gonna go destroy they shit, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? But. As it turns out, it was a peaceful protest, and uh, nobody shit got destroyed. She just was hoping, I guess. And you know what was funny about that? Yeah. Um, so I, I got that link, that tweet sent to me in the group chat I'm in that I've talked about. Yeah. And I don't know, I don't know that person, and no one I know knows that person. Yeah. But like, I sent you the video because I know that's like in your your city. Yeah. So I was like, I wanted you to be aware of what was going on around you, and uh, I ended up. Like clicking on the link, or I still had the link open again, or some some other point that later that evening, and I noticed that like my friends were replying to that person, being like, "Hey, uh, how about you guys don't fuck up shit, and like it's peaceful. How about you keep it that way?" So it's like they were trying to check someone that they don't even know yeah. into being like, "Hey, like this is peaceful. Like don't don't go making shit a scene." You know, just because you want to go break some shit. Yeah, yeah. And, and that was what I was going to say about someone who, like, I don't know a better way to say it, but I guess we'll, like, I, I'm able to shift between parties, uh, you know, like, I, I'm i cool hanging out with black people, Puerto Rican people, Asian people, white people, like, I'm, I, I feel like I'm pretty well welcomed at most picnics. And I, <laughs> I will say... That with everything that's going on in the the last ten days or so, that what I've seen out of the white picnics is a lot more understanding and anger and willingness to listen than in previous incidents. Yeah. So I feel like, unfortunately, it took a death of an innocent man for all this to happen. I will say, however, that it seems like. There's more people willing to get on board this time than in previous incidents. What, like I said, that's that that is kind of what I guess it, it swings back around to my my main point of how 2020 might be a year of great change, but that great change comes at great cost. And there are those who who unfortunately, in the case of George Floyd, in the case of Breonna Taylor, in the case of uh, Ahmaud, Ahmaud Arbery, they. And see, that's another thing. All this at once, or near enough at once, you know what I'm saying? In addition to that, to the Amy Cooper uh, incident we discussed last week. Uh, while all eyes can be uh, cast upon it, 
uh, opens eyes in one situation, and 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 and, and again, the, these people unfortunately are are sacrificial or have become sacrificial in a, in a way. But it seems it seems to be, and I and Lord knows, bro, you know how this country is, bro. It, 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 it could be a school shooting next week. I don't know if anybody in school, but you know what I mean. And no, nothing will ever change. But I am hopeful. I am slightly more positive than I have been. I I was I was really in my in my feelings yesterday, bro. I was really down on on all of this yesterday. My mom called me and uh was just checking in, and I was just like, "Yeah, I'm not really doing well today." And I can tell you that with all honesty. And uh, today I'm a little more positive. I'm a little more circumspect. Today is the day they they they. Uh, they laid George to rest. His family and, and friends got the, you know, go ahead and send him on off to glory. And uh, it's uh, it's sad that that man's family and his daughter and so forth don't won't have him around any longer. But if what comes from his passing, if what comes from all these people's passing is the great change that is so necessary right now in this in this nation, as a, definitely, but in this world as a, as a whole, then <sighs> you hope we can be we can make a peace with it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Christmas addicts. Somebody brought somebody made a tweet the other day. Hey, did you hear about the thing in Boston? And they describe how the Revolutionary War broke out after uh, a riot and officers shooting at uh, rioters. And the first person to die was a black man, and that black man was Christmas Addicts, who we all probably have learned about throughout history. Uh, Christmas Addicts was, you know, killed. Uh, the, Christmas Addicts' death is apparently what you set off the American Revolution. So what we started fighting against the crown for. So there, we we are a, a nation that was built on the backs on the back of bloody revolution. It's just what we do. You know what I'm saying? We get out there, we fuck some shit up, and we try to make things change. And uh, I think we may we I I am I guess I'm hopeful or I hope that we are at that we are at a, a, a turning point you know what I'm saying we have a dictator who uh, needs to get his ass uh, out and get up out the fucking paint and uh, I'm just sick of people's bullshit yeah it's just what I it mean, comes down to man like I I mean you know obviously you're sick of people being murdered that's a that's a given yeah but I'm talking about like. The fucking, like, flip-floppers or, like, the people who, like, pick and choose. Like, like the Laura Ingram bullshit. Okay. A couple years ago, Kevin Durant, LeBron James talking about, you know, one of the many incidences that have happened. And then she hits the uh, shut up and dribble. Yeah. Drew Brees says, Drew Brees says some shit. And it's, oh, well, he's entitled to his opinion. And, or then it's, like, people on, on Twitter... Like, how could they be looting and breaking out windows and this is a bullshit, it's unnecessary. But, but, like, it's like you don't apply that same sort of anger and energy to watching a dude get murdered. It's just like, oh, well, what are the facts? Yeah. You know, what did he, what did he, what did he do? But, like, I'm just so sick of the, sick of the bullshit. It's like, I, I just want people to be, like, fucking consistently, like, down the line, like... If you're going to tell LeBron and KD to shut up and dribble, tell Drew Brees to shut up and pass. Like, don't don't be like, well, <laughs> you know, he has the opportunity to speak his mind because, like, you know, quote unquote asterisk because he's white. Like, I'm just so sick well, of that like blatant inequality bullshit that like I, it's it's so frustrating. It's like I obviously I know it'll never compare to the frustration you guys go through as black men. I'm just saying from this side, I feel that frustration for you because I'm so sick of it. I just want people to be just straight up. And it's like, I just feel like they never will be. Well, Laura Ingram's not going to straight up because that bitch a racist. (laughs) So, um, of course, she's going to be inconsistent on that point. I just I just don't get how these people can look at themselves in the mirror and think that like. Yeah, that's okay. Or like, oh no, I'm being totally fair in both situations. Or like, just, just, just how do you live with yourself when you do that shit? I just don't get it. Like, well, you live with yourself in a in a multi million dollar house. 
If she lives with him because she's probably just gets paid to do that, I doubt that she really believes. Yeah, that. a lot of these people are just you know what I'm saying they're which is worse. It in a is way, worse. If you think no, about not it. in a way. It is worse. You know, period, point blank. Call it what it is. It is worse that you are a paid asshole. That you're paid to fucking you to know, say talk shit about uh, about the, you know saying uh, people in this country, but you don't really mean it. So, you, but you just say it, and th- therefore, you, you what you do is you make other people believe it. You know what I'm saying? You have other people thinking that that's that's the factual or the, the statement it is. <clears throat> just like Don Lemon, like I don't believe him now. Um, you know, yeah, we joke around and call him Don Lemon Pepper now, like he like he really down with it, but. <laughs> Um, I mean, that's it. So that, that the, so that's is that the black dude from CNN? Yeah. Whereas yeah. Okay. I, 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 I allow for the idea that Don Lemon might have just got woke up. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And it's cool if you don't got no okay. faith in Don Lemon. I'm not saying like you. I'm not trying to make you. I but. mean, I don't. I'm just saying like, I don't feel like maybe 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 he, I, maybe he told the company line. Maybe he told the company line for as long as he could do it, and then he just wrote, reached a breaking point, and he's like, fuck this, I can't do this shit no more. I just feel like he got paid to to speak against Obama, and then when that time was over, he's like, you know what, I, I can't play the heel no more. It's time for me, I mean... The old yeah. wrestling turn face? Yeah. So... But, I mean, let's let's be real. Like, uh, Tavis, Tavis <laughs> Smiley, old rapey ass, and, uh... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Cornell West. All they did was talk shit about Obama when Obama was in office, but they ain't said a goddamn word about the orange buffoon. So it's like you can't call it, man. You can't trust. The, you can't trust a lot of people well, out here, man. Well, Tavis Smiley got canceled pretty yeah. much, but then uh, Cornell West got quiet two years uh, before Obama left office, pretty much. So I don't. I mean, I feel like um, he kind of got quiet around the time. He was getting fake arrested at some of those, um, some, some like some. What, what did he, he get arrested at? <clears throat> to the internet. Yeah, I mean, not really. <laughs> we don't never know what we're talking about anyway. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, like, I like the fact that we know what we're talking about. Fuck that. <laughs> uh, we 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 are we are don't. wise and good at what we do, man. But. I think y'all understand all of our points in this situation, and uh... so let me let me ask you guys something. What? Okay, he got arrested at the. Uh, I'm sorry, lunch. Uh, he got arrested at the uh, protest in Ferguson. Oh, oh. okay. You say? And how long was Ferguson? Like three years ago? Six years ago. Wow. It's been a long time since Mike Brown, man. So, but so I was right. It was two years before Obama Correct. was out of um, office. All right, there we go. As a side note, I don't love lemon pepper. I just had some for the first time uh, the other day when I had Wingstop for the first time, and uh, you wrong. Sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> very wrong. <laughs> yeah, have you have you had Wingstop um, yet? Yeah. I haven't had Wingstop lemon pepper, okay, so well, maybe. Well, d- well um, I had the you're, seasoning, you're, the actual you're, seasoning you're lemon pepper in some of my soup. Donnie, Donnie, you're out of your element. Donnie. You're out of your element. Uh, all right. I put it in my suit. Donnie. My- Donnie, you're out of your element. All right, Box, what were you saying? My apologies. <laughs> Donnie, you're out of your element. So what, what I was, I was going to ask you guys, as, as black men, what do you feel I should have done or do when it pertains to everything that's happening? Bruh, I mean, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to express white guilt or look for some sort of cop out or something. I'm just, I don't know what to do. I'm and t- I, and I'm, I'm saying this straight up. I've been just t- like, I go online and I see people that like feel like they don't want people to talk, and then I see other people that do want people to talk, and then it's like, I don't know what the fuck to do. I, I've been saying it for years, right, I'm gonna continue me- to say it to you. What I want you, what I want you, and I want everybody to do is when you hear somebody come out the mouth on some old, on some old yang. You gotta, you gotta just step up and talk and be like, hold on, bro. That's just, I, I just, I just, I'm, that's just what I'm saying, man. Because it's like it's just, it's been too many people who just sit, sit on the goddamn sidelines <clears> and just let you know, saying everybody just talk that shit. And it's like I just, I, it can't be no more. I mean, it, it seriously can't be. It's gotta be. It's gotta be like, bro. Is it, I don't, I don't even know how you can word it because of course it's gonna, all it's gonna do is end up getting you into uncomfortable situations. So I guess I have to ask you to get uncomfortable as fuck. 
but I mean, that's just what I'm asking of you. I know Anthony head going back and forth, but it's just it's just no, what no, I'm, no. it's just what it's, just, it's I, what I, I would ask of you. I would ask you to be like, and you see, like this right here is a perfect example of my situation where it's like I'm hearing you, okay, and then I'm seeing Anthony, and it's like I don't know what the fuck to do. You, okay, I'm gonna tell you exactly the two the two most important things to do. Know the room you're in. Know the person you're talking to. Like, if you feel like... Like, if it's like five or ten people in the room, like, saying a bunch of different stuff, and it's just like, this ain't gonna be good for me. Then, what's the point? What's the point? What's literally the point of, of, of like, like making a ruckus in the whole room, you're by yourself, like, things could get ugly... That's not going to be good for you, and it's not going to be good for your future. If you see a friend of yours, somebody you care about, like somebody you you feel as though isn't a lost person to talk to, by all means, be like, "No, you're wrong. I love you enough to say some say something about this." If you feel as though that person is a value, or like that person is like. You know, has a conscience. You're like, no, you better than that. Like, you should think about what you said. You should think about your actions. You should think about the situation. This is I, by all means speak. But somebody who, um, you know, you know, work at a gas station and like, um, no, I don't serve the darkies. What, what's the point of saying something to that dude? What's I, the I, point? I, I can allow for that. That is uh, that, sure. Well, can't you pop off with a oh, fuck you, you racist motherfucker to that? To guy. what? I and mean, then, he's some stranger. You're never going to see him to, again. You but then, well. see, but then see, to what the end? Thing, Why get your blood pressure up for this idiot? You know what I'm saying? You can, I, 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 get, I guess part of my question, though, was I, I get all what you're saying in, as far as, like, me out in the world. But, like, mm-hmm. I'm talking, like, representation on social media is, is more what I'm thinking. And I, I'm, I'm saying it like this. When all, when all the situations happened in the past with, like, shootings and stuff, I never once changed my Facebook profile to a flag. Yeah. Like, where they do the little, like, like 3D overage of my profile picture or nothing like that. Yeah. And it's, like, it's part of why I didn't post the black square thing this time. Because it's, like, I know where my heart is. I know, like, yeah. what my, my, my values are in my life as far as how I treat people. I felt like it was almost, like, for me... I, I I was torn between the solidarity of the situation and feeling like it was like a a, a virtue signaling marker for for someone like me, you know, like you don't want to be performative in your action. You want to yeah. You want to be action in your action. But then it's like people who like don't know me as well as you guys do. It's like then do like do they look at me as like someone who's not like representative of like the change and positivity and shit like that or is it's like I was like so torn on what to do with that shit especially now, because I don't like post that shit that's not something you need to worry anyway. about full, 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 yeah full stop you don't you don't have to worry about <laughs> what did Dr. Seuss say those that mind don't matter and those that matter don't mind and that's just the I real mean, shit it's kind of like like I got black friends and black people I know that didn't yeah. do it me, I, mean, I didn't do it. And, oh, there you go. I got a black you know what I did do. do I, I, what I did do is I did not. I was uh, working. I literally was working to early Tuesday morning to get some stuff posted on uh, a show posted on YouTube, and I stopped myself because the point was the, of that day was, and I know I'm a black man and I'm and I'm the star of that particular show, so who cares? I could post it, but I did not post it because because that day was meant to be for a day of getting out there doing the work. And me just posting the silly ass YouTube video wasn't gonna do it. And it turns out a lot of people didn't post on YouTube that day, which really led to a, a wild. Ad- well, it's probably how I started watching Avatar. So <laughs> we'll get into that later when we talk about what we've been doing in this shit. But I don't want you. I, I, you are you are absolutely. I feel like you're absolutely correct in that uh, performative actions, especially on social media. Social media is bullshit, bro. I, I literally sit here because I have, I st- I've stopped posting the show on, on, on Facebook. I don't know I, you wouldn't notice it because you ain't on Facebook. But now I'm at the point where I'm like, I think I have to delete Facebook and not just not be on Facebook. I mean, actually remove Facebook. And that kind of stinks because I'm going to like you know what I'm saying I do talk to some people on Facebook Messenger and so forth and so on. But it's like 
I think for my well-being and for a better country, again, that it might be just time to call that shit a done deal because that site has said outright that they ain't going to do nothing about the president's of bullshit, what he, lies. Yeah, his lies, you know what I'm saying? And because whatever, because Zuckerberg just don't want to do nothing about it. And that his company, they're like people who work for Facebook are protesting and walking out, you know, virtually because you know everybody working at home at this point because of that. So that's a step. That's a, that's a, that's a step I am considering. Not even considering. I just I just got to sit my ass down, download all my shit off of it, and call it a night because that's just what it, it, it is. It's um, it's making sure you donate to the cause. Our, the company we work for happens to be doing double donations right now of, of tour things of, of this nature. So if you got a couple of dollars, man, throw a couple of dollars, get the receipt, and then uh, and, and, and send it into work so they can double it. You know what I'm saying? See, when it comes to that stuff, it's like people list off charities. Yeah. But it's like, I don't know where the money goes. I don't know what the what the charities do. Like, there needs to be like uh, some sort of charity vetting process, you know, like a Yelp for charity. <laughs> I, I I am relatively certain that th- those that exists. And you, because I mean, think about it, like when when like breast cancer awareness comes around, and like they really hype up S- Susan G. Komen. You hear people talk about like S- money from Susan G. Komen don't really do nothing. It's just like. It's for more advertisement for raising awareness for breast cancer. It doesn't really go to breast cancer research. Yeah, a good, a good, I believe, eighty percent is something. What I read goes to just, you know, running Susan G. Coleman's uh, for the cure company. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not actually. Like, I'm not toward the cure. I'm not giving my money for you guys to have jobs. I like. It's like I want my money to go towards a solution. But again, so it's like it's, it's like why yeah. I didn't give money when I was at that Cavs game. And they're trying to pressure me and to give them something. It's like I don't know shit about it. It's like you're you're trying to pull at my heartstrings to get me to open my wallet to something that I'm not like educated about. And I feel it's it's, it's similar in this situation where it's like okay, you threw you listed ten charities. I don't know anything about anything that you're telling me. It could be literally ten pyramid schemes for all I know. For sure. But again, this is where this is where you do the work and you go and research. If you got to, you sit down, you read about all ten of the motherfuckers. Vanessa sent me a, a link today and was like, Hey, should I buy this uh maker for them? They're they're claiming to uh be uh uh donating money to, you know, a good cause. And I'm like, well go read up on it. Go look into what that means. Are they <laughs> So you're telling me to do everything I do, do the things I do with everything else in my life. Yeah, you research it until a fucking fault. <laughs> Yeah, I would have you research it for me if I do. If I wasn't already the kind of guy who researches it himself, it's just what we do. It's them September babies, man. It's how we do things, man. We get in there and we get to the nitty gritty, and that's how everybody and their mama read the wire cutter now. Because I can I've been on that ass about the wire cutter for years. It's just what we do. <laughs> when I hear them talking about the wire cutter, I'm like, Judge John Hodger. Now I'm like, I've been down, but thank you for joining in on this. This is how we get down. <laughs> What you do is what you like. Said we 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 ha- we have a voice in this show, and we get out there and we spread this voice as far as we can. You know what I'm saying? I know it's not huge, but a couple people were like, "Hey, uh, if you're a, a, a black of uh, uh, content maker, uh, let me know so I can pr- try to get some uh, get some action going your way." And I did let that. I let, I let people know. I'm like, I am I am a black creator. I'm the host of this show, and we out here speaking on issues of black and brown people, damn near weekly. You know what I'm saying? We are, yes, a, 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 ostensibly a comedy show. But when, you know what I'm saying, when the shit hit the motherfucking fan, we out here and we're trying to do our best and we try to speak to those who do listen to us and spread the word. And it can never be said that we're not out here doing just that. So, you know what I'm saying? You do that. You don't worry about social media because it's bullshit. It just is. You know who your yeah. actual friends are in that regard. You know who your people are out there and who, like I said, again, those that mind don't matter. Those that matter don't mind because they know you and they know your heart and they know what you, what you are trying to do out here. Again, money to the cause is just real. And like I said, I, I myself have been have been out here trying to research who, where the money goes. I've been donating to uh, candidates who are uh, you know trying to get ele- who are elected in other states, not just not not just uh, local in Ohio, but other places. I've been trying to you know donate to the candidates running against Mitch McConnell down in. Uh, down in uh, Kentucky, I want to donate to the the person running against uh, Susan uh, up uh, Susan Collins up, Collins, yeah, up in Maine. I'm just trying to make sure it's I am. Um, I'm making sure I put my motherfucking money where my mouth is, and uh, 
I put my mouth on this microphone. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. But not like the guy who sang the Transformers uh, movie song. Man. Damn, Stan Bush. What's Stan Bush? Be beautiful. Thank you. What is Stan, Stan Bush? Stan Bush is a Republican. You remember Stan Bush when uh, uh, Rod and uh, Classic interviewed him? Yeah, he was just, he was just yeah. real churchy. I he, didn't know he was yeah, a Republican, just, too. Yeah, he's just oh, he super churchy, look conservative. What? Maybe he's one of those Republicans that hate um, uh, Trump. Those are starting to come out of the woodwork lately. Yeah, but... Now he's gone too far now. Yeah, yeah. but you know what? If, 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 better if... Better late than never? Better late than never, but 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 never late better. You know what I'm saying? Uh, to, to quote, I believe that's the, 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 the bar Drake. <laughs> uh, but... You know, I, I had that same better late than never thought today from uh, Ghostbusters. When the, when the Titanic came into port, because um, there was a story that came out today where um, a backup QB for the Buffalo Bills had some texts uh, posted to Twitter. Uh, it was like a conversation he was having like a year ago with somebody, and he said something to the effect of like, uh, only elite whites should be able to buy gun suppressors or something like that. And the person posted it to Twitter. And there was, like, uh, screenshots of a conversation they had with someone who, who... I don't know if it was a dude's wife or girlfriend or sister or... I don't know the relation. But they were just like, why would you do that? He's in danger of getting fired. Essentially, like, he, he's in danger of getting cut now. Yeah. And, um, like, she's just like, you know, I felt like it had to be done. Like, you know, it wasn't right. But then, like, um, in our in our group checks... Uh, chat where I saw like that's how I saw the post like my own buddy was just like asking the question of like you know do we think it's right for someone to post something like that like well after the fact and I, I said something essentially like depends on the context and like but I feel like if you say something it's like what does it matter if it was 10 days ago or 10 years ago like you know words have consequences regardless of when you say them sometimes you know it just takes longer for the shit to come to light and it's like if you said it you know you either you know gotta show people that you're actually sorry and work towards being better or like you're caught it's like just cause you know you said something seven years ago like there's no statute of limitations on bullshit that comes out of your mouth mm-hmm. I kinda I mean I don't know I feel like sometimes <sighs> It is a statute of limitation on some of the things you say because you don't. I don't feel like the same way I felt about things yesterday. Um, I kind of feel like, um, yeah, you can kind of try to own it and and, and try to uh, move past it somewhat. But I mean, people grow. I kind of feel like um, people people the people same grow shit. and people should be allowed to grow. But this, it, like like he said, it, there are consequences. You know what I'm saying? And yes. sometimes it's just that it's like, and, and also if you have grown, you might be more apt, more apt to be like, well, you know what, I did say that shit, and I gotta face the consequences. You know, I said on this very podcast that I would never have children. Yeah, <laughs> and I have two. I don't. I don't mean like changing your opinion. I think there's a difference between changing I, your I opinion. I shouldn't have changed my opinion. No, I'm saying I think there's a difference in, in <laughs> changing your opinion or like watching a show for a second time and realizing that you actually do like it. I think that that I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that kind of shit, but I'm saying it's like if you say something bad like like he did about a racial issue, like it's like what is it like a year later like all of a sudden it's like you know maybe he doesn't feel that way, maybe he doesn't or whatever, but it's like I still think it's fair to have the conversation about it, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I I I, 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 I and I I don't doubt what they might mean is like you know when uh somebody get hired by Saturday Night Live and uh, people go looking back and they said some shit like six years ago that was real rah rah and you like mm, are you forgiven have you changed oh, like Jimmy Fallon with the black <coughs> I don't even know no I actually wasn't even talking about him it was uh the first uh Hispanic woman on Saturday Night Live I guess had said some crazy shit in her past. And people had had, you know, people had the receipts. And it was like, look at this shit. Now, mind you, actually nothing happened. She didn't get, she didn't not, not get the job of Saturday Night Live. Unlike that white comedian last year who did get his ass just out, they got his ass 
up out the penny quickly. <laughs> but well, he was very unapologetic. Oh yeah, but her, yeah, and, and, and I think she might have just said some. She said some wild shit, and I, and, and I can't call it uh, of, of its you know depth of breath. But something else came up that we actually had a discussion about in the group chat, and it's funny. All this shit comes from my one buddy. It's like he's a fucking truffle hound <laughs> for this kind of shit. I swear, man. It's like at one point today, it was literally him who had just posted like seven things in a row without anyone else saying anything. It's like he's having a one a conversation with himself out like it's like he's like in a park and he's just talking to himself about like what happened, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> he he posted something in there last night and he asked us a question. It was a story about uh, a local taco place that had gotten an order for 500 tacos for the highway patrol and some of the employees refused to do the order because they knew that it was for the highway patrol. And uh, the owner told them that if they didn't do it, that they were fired and they walked out. So he asked the question of like, like, uh, do we think that was right? And what do we agree with the owners and what we do? Yada, yada, yada. And I said, uh, jokingly at first, I said, um, you know, that kind of shit happens in my job now. What the fuck's the difference? People tell, say they're not going to do shit, and other people do it for them all the time. But um, I, I, when, I, like, when I got serious about the discussion, I told them that I thought that uh, place had shitty ownership because I feel like good owners and good managers in that regard would understand where people were coming from based on the climate of the world right now and would figure out a way to work through the problem rather than taking a hardline stance and costing people their jobs, you know? Yeah. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm too optimistic. I've, I've never described no, you I, as that. <laughs> you are the realist. <laughs> so, I, 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 I don't know. Maybe you got a sprinkle of optimism in, in, in your time at home for, that I don't, I'm unaware of. But, yeah, man, you've always been just a more of a realist than, 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 than you know what I'm saying... The glass is rather than half full or half empty. You just, you know, what I'm saying. So I can't call it. <laughs> but, but I think the way that I, I've looked at things in the in, in the world is always kind of try to be understanding with people's shit, whether I agree with it or not. Yeah. For the most part, like, yeah, shit will make me mad or whatever. But it's like I don't think that people shouldn't have the right to say what they think, whether I agree with them or not. Well, yeah. Shit like that, you know. So it's like in this situation, it's like the world that we're living in, the situation with the world, it's like it's a very sensitive time. So it's like I, I think that like you want to hear people out and their feelings on the matter rather than being like, oh, you don't want to make these tacos? Well, then fuck you. Get out of here. Like I feel like the, the better course of action in the long run is to kind of hear people out and try and work with them <coughs> rather than like, you know, fucking – for I guess a lack of a better phrase, put your your foot on their back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, making five hundred tacos is fucking hard. <laughs> it's a lot of fucking yeah. tacos. Yeah, but and I'm sure he had to make all of he had to make a, quite a few of those by himself. Now, yeah. poor guy. You ain't got that cock mm-hmm. gun for the sour cream, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he if he got two of them, then I agree. I'm sure he's a he's a patriot with two of them. <laughs> Pop, pop, man. Pop, pop. Oh, my cold, dead oh, hand. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, you know, hey, let's try to get into some show here, man. What's going on with you, Ant? Outside of, uh, you know, the world crumbling. Uh, what's, man, the, what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the, the bunk mean, bed regime looking like currently? I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll hear it when you get my audio. <laughs> oh, bro. Um, I can hear, I can hear, I can hear you pray thug yeah. in the background. So very loud, and like I said, I, I, I what it is is uh, as I edit the show, I, I, I very, I, I just, I just like I said, if you if you were silent, most of the weeks I knew you had got up to go check on him, but you could hear him go, and I was like, oh that poor baby. <laughs> um, yeah, they was uh, they was in there um, wrestling around and um, yeah, just doing. It, it it seemed like it's only on fucking Thursdays that that that, that wants to happen. 
Like everybody, it seems like oh the house is quiet by eight o'clock every night, but on Thursdays it's time to <laughs> fuck around. Let's do it. <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you, the cat's the same way. She's here right now. I saw. I keep seeing Kelly just kind of slide through like, yeah. I'm here, baby, on the camera. <laughs> She's fucking persistent. <laughs> There's something yeah, about the magnetic I mean, field of the microphone that brings it out. Have they adjusted to the bed, though? Like, are they used to sleeping in it? Like, No. Do, do, um, do you feel like it was a... Uh, a wrong move to get the bunk bed now or do you feel like it'll be fine in the long run it'll probably be fine in the long run but like um Emery and Anthony are currently um as I probably spoke before are currently sleeping together in the bed um in the top bunk um and like you know it's just a you know a, a, a bunch of bullshit to begin with cause like we're at home every day now they are refusing to take naps, and it's harder to kind of make them take naps when, you know, we're we're working. Um, it's just it's just a uh, a bad time for the just empire. Just gotta slip a Benny drill. Slip him a Benny. <laughs> um, that oh man. So if you give my oldest son a Benny drill, he wakes up <laughs> angry, like in a bad mood, like a. Um, <laughs> It's because he knows yeah. he's been drugged. <laughs> Maybe. I'm allergic to um, Benadryl. It gives me the shakes. Oh. Yeah, Benadryl is the uh, shit. Yeah, I, um, I love me some I like Benadryl. Yep, yeah, I, can't, I can't take it. Benadryl, yes. I love taking it when I'm sick. And I go from like feeling like I'm like going to pass out to this like... State of like suspension where it's like <laughs> it's like I'm working, but my 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 body's on autopilot and my brain is someplace else. I've I've had to um to take some like not not to, like I don't think I took it last night, but I guess I did um, because my allergies has been bothering me, and um I guess maybe because I've been in a house so much and we've had the windows open. And, You've been waking up with like puffy eyes. Yeah, watery eyes, itchy yeah, nose. That, that's been me lately too. The, I, every morning I wake up and it's like my face is swollen. I gotta get on some, get on that yeah, Claritin or something, man. I am. I'm on Zyrtec. Um, Claritin doesn't work very well. I'm going to have to. Um, I'm probably going to have to call a pulmonary doctor because my asthma seems like it's getting, um, it's starting to get yeah. back up. And um, you know, with all the COVID stuff. Um, you know, I haven't been, um, you know, to see my regular doctor yeah. stuff. So it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna make sure I uh, get on the horn and and find somebody, uh, uh, an allergy doctor, um, because I don't want to, you know, have an asthma attack and and die from that. And and if if we die, if I die on this podcast, it better not be an episode that week. I do not want you guys to record. <laughs> All right, we'll remember what that. What would you want us to make your uh, your namesake meal? What would it be? It's Tatum, gotta be tots. Tatum tots. It, but it, a special uh, version no, of Tatum tots I, with a real good cheese. I would not. And a real good potato to make them out of. It, tatum tots covered in smoked <laughs> and no. t- turkey bacon. Uh, no turkey faking. Yeah, you know he don't fuck with turkey bacon. He offends, Even, he I actually, I, I, I we've been eating turkey bacon ever since um, my um, my father. I, I guess it'd be my stepfather, not father in law. A nice, um, nice veggie lasagna. I, I do like veggie lasagna, but that doesn't have anything to do with my name. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I was eating chicken, um, chicken bacon. I was like, this chicken ain't bacon. T- yeah. What the fuck part of the chicken can you bacon? <laughs> the thighs. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess that'd be some thin strips. There's some small no, strips. No, you just you, you take it in four. I mean, you, ain't, you, you ain't cutting like a like pork belly yeah. like you do for. Oh, we're making like chicken nuggets, like bacon. Yeah. Chicken, chicken nugget. Oh uh, yeah. So, um, Stan came through with the chicken bacon. We like, is it good? I'm like, it's okay. But I, I appreciated the taste of it on my sandwich. It is still a cold cut. But then I seen um, I went to the store and like turkey bacon was like a dollar eighty eight. I'm like, okay. 
And so I was making some the other morning. I make a, um, well, I sent y'all a picture of my, um, how I make my sandwiches every day. Uh, with a um, with a flatbread and egg and some some white cheddar. And my son was like, "What's that?" I'm like, "It's turkey bacon." He's like, "Can I have some?" I was like, "It don't taste like it, it, it's nothing like pork bacon." He and he oh he's on this whole um, what what is this made yeah. out of kick? Uh, we were in the um, on, on one of my lunch breaks. We were watching Man Fire Food. I don't, and, I don't know um, that. What's that? Like, What's that? Oh, so Man Fire Food is this show with this little uh, Puerto Rican dude, I believe. No, uh, Gay, look up what uh, nationality this man is on Man Fire Food. I will do that. Man Fire Food. Thank you, Gabe. Um, <laughs> and, like, just like the title of the show, it's, it's usually a man, sometimes a lady. And, like, he goes to these different locations around the U.S., and like like usually it's like a original con- contraption that they use to cook the food and like all different like and things of how they prepare um different barbecue styles pretty much and like you know the one, the one particular one we were watching like they took a bunch of cinder blocks and they put sand at the bottom and some canvas and then they built it up and then they took this giant like screen and they put a whole pig on there and that's when he was like what's that was like that's a pig he was like a real pig i'm like yeah and i was like this part is this and this part is that because they also have they actually had like a diagram on the tv is like and we use this part of the pig and that part of the pig you ever see uh, where they? Yeah, I think, you ever see where they do pig roast and they actually bury the pig? They do that all the time on Man Fire Food. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure, like with your um, with your Food Network um, swag, you can try, you can probably find some episodes of that. We talked about this because Screech lost the pig on the Hawaii special of uh, Saved by the Bell, <laughs> <laughs> which is the the worst episode because there's no laugh track on that. Oh, and by the way, he's Trinidadian. Yes, he is. Trinidad. <laughs> and I knew that because he talked about that the other day. I just knew he was, he was um, something. Because I think he was talking about Scotch Bonnet oh, or something yeah. like that. And, and it would and, be and great to be... He can't say comfortable. Huh. It'd be great to be a sexy Trinidadian because you can say, who's your Trinidaddy? Oh, That's exactly what so. I was thinking when I said it. A Trinidaddy? Who's your Trinidaddy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and I think, um, like, right before that, we was watching, like, the world's greatest foods. Because it was, like, like a, a very pork-heavy um, hour of TV. Um, it was like, oh, it was like all these different... He was like, that's bacon? He was like, that's gross. And it was like, but then, you know, long story short, the next day... He wanted some turkey bacon, and now he likes it. So I, I, I respect him more. Um, you know, I do. I you know I do most of the time I cook breakfast. So um, you know, he'll eat what I what, what I eat um, on one hand. But Emery um, don't really want nothing but waffles and respect pancakes. It. So you, then, you got the Leslie milk of children, huh? But then he'll, he'll, he'll eat a bowl of cereal and Anthony won't eat a bowl of cereal. He's your happens. child. Um, and like, I don't know. I eat, um, what is, I eat special K. What is Anthony religious? Steel, steel cut oats or whatever? <laughs> no. He, he, yeah, he'll, he'll eat some, some overnight oatmeal. oats. Like he, okay. Craisins, thank you. He, uh, he, he likes, um, an egg fried hard. Damn right. Turkey bacon or bacon. Or um, he'll have um, sometimes some sausage, um, and uh, or they'll, they'll want a waffle with peanut butter on it. And since we're out of chocolate chips, or I told him we didn't have no more because I didn't want him eating all the chocolate chips, uh, we'll put a little chocolate mm-hmm. syrup on it, um, some peanut butter and chocolate. Um, but I mean, man, I'm getting tired of cooking for them, man. <laughs> like because like. Some mornings is like, okay, I want this, and then I didn't want it like that. I'm like, really? I got to get back to work, or somebody else gonna take all the work for me. <laughs> um, and it's like, or sometimes it'll be like, 
now, now this <laughs> happened today. So I get like I said, I gave him turkey bacon, a fried egg, and a pancake, and I think hash browns. Yeah. Um, a hat like a, like a McDonald's style hash brown. This one, and uh, that I put in the air fryer. So I looked and turned around, like. Emery had ate his um, his pancake, but Anthony had ate everything except his pancakes. But then I didn't realize that Emery was coming in here sneaking, like going to watch TV and eating eating Anthony's pancakes. <laughs> and I was like, Anthony, I'm not cooking you nothing else until you eat the pancakes. And then he started crying, and I was like, uh, I felt bad because uh, my girlfriend was like, Yeah, his pancakes going. Emery ate them all. <laughs> <laughs> so then they had uh, waffles for lunch. And uh, turkey bacon, and I think uh, another egg. So, yeah, but I'm seriously getting tired of uh, cooking for them because they don't. Nobody appreciates um, me cooking. Nobody, That's nobody a goddamn ever, lie. Okay, I won't. I won't hear this this heresy. Oh yeah, right. I, I swear, man. Like today, I just had to go for a walk. I was just so I was just so done with um with with my family for today. Like. Usually I go for a drive or something. I was like, I really don't want to, don't want to go for a drive. I just I went for a walk, but then my my walk sucked because my headphones died like halfway through the walk. And I was like, shit, I gotta walk all the way back and not listen to shit. What kind of life is this? <laughs> what part of the game is that? So um, yeah, uh, we had discussed it. I'm, I'm I've been trying to you know get my protein, uh, uh, you know hit hit the protein hard in the morning. So I did get the protein powder. I got the vegan protein powder, as I said, because like I said, most of the protein powders is made with, uh, you know, cow stuff. And I realized was I, it the one I sent you the link to? No, I, I, I'm just getting whatever of uh, because Vanessa was ordering groceries, whatever we got from uh, from Meyer. Uh, and, and, and before this all said, then I'll run over there and grab it right quick. But uh, I was talking to Box yesterday because yesterday was the first morning I tried it, and I mixed it with milk. And one, I don't. I'm not a nigga that drink milk. You know what I'm saying? I have milk with my cereal, or milk goes in is a component of things. But I'm not a dude sitting around drinking milk. But I, I you know, I mix my, I mix the powder with the milk. Uh, it, it tastes, it tasted fine. But my stomach was ruined. For are you doing mm, vegetarian or vegan? The, the 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 powder I used was vegan. And I did that, and I, and I did I, that, and like I said, I did that just because that's that's the one Vanessa found. No big deal. I'm not, and I'm, I'm not trying to. I'm not avoiding meats or anything. I got there. It's not that. Well, but I mean, but I mean, you asked me last week for a recommendation of a vegan protein powder. Yes, so that's yeah. why I was confused. Because because most protein powders I have found that are not vegan and or vegetarian use uh like say uh, animal byproducts in a way that I'm just not comfortable with. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't okay. know. I don't know. So so it was a morality thing, not a diet. No, okay. it's a diet thing. You know, your boy don't eat swine, and I don't eat red meat, so I don't want them throwing some old cow bits up in that bitch. Cause the, the fuck am I? Oh well, yeah. I mean, that's where the protein comes <coughs> from. Whey protein comes from cow dairy. Is it just dairy? Is it just because I mean, I drink milk, so clearly, well, I don't drink milk. I just went over that. But you know what I mean. If if the if the protein is just from dairy, cool. But if the protein is from another source, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's it's way isolated. So it, it comes from. From milk. Okay, well, if it's just that, then yeah, I could probably I can just get down with the get down. But either way, uh, mixing it with milk, <laughs> dusty making it not vegan, uh, it, it sat on my tum- my tummy in a way that I was like, this is just awful. So, but on the on the side of the thing, it says mix with water or juice, and I'm like, why would I mix chocolate, you know, <laughs> chocolate flavor powder with <laughs> juice? What the fuck juice am I mix this with? Uh, this morning I was just like, you know what? Let me let, let's just let's do it with water. Let's do it with water. Everybody seems to be doing it with water. They got a little shaky cup. I don't have a shaky cup. I just they got a spoon and a big old whatever. Drink of water. It was uh, considerably less palatable, but it went down easier and my tummy wasn't hurting. The the water does make it lighter. Yeah. Whereas like the milk, the milk gives it a little thickness. Yeah. Um, the, the viscosity changes. Yeah, the the one you have is it like? Um, oh, I'm gonna go. Is it sweetened with like sucralose or something? I'm gonna go grab it. Let me see. Protein powder, protein powder. I've been thinking about doing some protein shakes, but then I said, 
Not yet. <laughs> Has your gym opened back up much? No, not not as far as I know. It, as of like a week and a half ago, the, like they had put out a statement that they were not going to open when everyone else was opening and that they didn't know when they were going to open. And that when they do open, they don't know if they're going to open as the same type of gym they were before they closed. Yeah. So, like, when the gym opens up, I may not even be welcome back. All right. So, it's called, uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's called, uh, no, let me turn my background off. Sorry. <clears throat> Is that the Brooklyn Bridge? Either that or the George Washington. Not sure. And because I'm not sure, I don't want to tell you this, the Brooklyn Bridge, and if not me. So, it's called. Uh, Look it up, Gabe. <laughs> it's called a V. I, I mean, I, I've walked on the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. It looked very familiar. It's called Vegan Smart All in One Nutritional Shake. So, I mean, I think that makes it different than protein powder because it's a nutritional shake. And, uh. That's a big ass canister. Yeah, but oddly enough, only 15 servings. You're supposed to be. Oh, I'm supposed to be putting two scoops. That's another thing. I only put one scoop in, uh, uh, this morning. So, I probably, I probably, I probably was supposed <laughs> to hit that bitch twice. Uh. So is it, is it sweetened or unsweetened? I believe it is sweetened. I'm trying to see what it's sweetened with. Organic stevia. Yeah. Okay. So that's what. Yeah, because the um, the protein powder I have, it's uh, zero carb because they use uh, I believe they use sucralose oh. to sweeten it. And um, what I what I do because like it's like uh, cookies and cream flavored, so it's kind of light tasting. Um, when I mix it. Uh, I was drinking it with almond milk, but like I'm, I don't have any almond milk in the house. So um, the last two days, I went back to using water. <coughs> so what I do is like I take two scoops of it and I put it in the shaker, and then I put a couple of drops of stevia uh, liquid into uh-huh. it to help give it a little more sweetness. Yeah. And I also put a couple little uh, teaspoons of Hershey's cocoa powder into yeah. it. To kind of make it a little more chocolatey, and the stevia helps to make the cocoa powder not taste so bitter. Yeah, and I just mix that up, and it becomes like a cookies and cream chocolate milkshake. Well, oddly enough, the point of me bringing this up, the whole milk situation, is that so I, I, I made a quick grocery store run today, and I was like, well, straight up milk, I can't do. I'm just you know saying I'm, my, my my tummy ain't built for that, and uh, water was just like I said not palatable. But it turns out now that I think about it, it's because I probably only because I put one scoop in and I, I, and I was supposed to put two. So who knows? Water actually could be mm-hmm. fine. But I was like, let me go get some uh, you know some dairy alternatives, some milk alternatives. And I was staring at the counter cabinet for a while, and I was like, all right, um, let me try this coconut milk because I've heard good things about it. And then I was like, let me fuck with this rice milk because I, I rice milk is, is pretty much horchata. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I know what horchata tastes like. I know its consistency. I know its flavor profile. And so I was like, let me do that. So I grabbed a, I grabbed one of each of those. And so we're, we're gonna I'm going to experiment going forward here with uh, which one works best with this particular uh, uh, powder. Uh, yeah, keep me keep me in the loop because I'm definitely a fan of the almond milk. Look. Yeah. I don't like the almond. The almond milk gives it a little more thickness, but it's not as you know. It's, it's not so dairy full. Yeah. There's there are and uh, remember you remember how hard it was uh, when I, when initially it came out. How hard it was to find oat milk. Well, now everybody, and mama got an oat milk. Like lots of oat milk options are out there now, and so I, uh, I mm-hmm. saw that. But I, I didn't get that because I knew I had I didn't love oat milk. I also know I don't love pea milk. They have some ripple there at the grocery store as well. You know what I'm saying? Which is the pea milk brand. So, like I said, that's why I slid in with the coconut and the uh, the uh, the rice, rice milk. I would suggest um, the vanilla rice milk. You could get that at too. one point. Like even if you didn't like, like if you didn't love it, but like you don't hate it. Yeah. Maybe like whatever's the cheapest, try it because like depending on what you add into the the shake, like you at some point like might not even be able to tell the difference. Between the different milks, because mm-hmm. like the the shake taste may overpower okay. it, so like you could be paying more, and like it not even really make that much of a difference, mm-hmm. you know. Like it could be, say, almond milk's three dollars and pea milk's five dollars. It's like when you actually get the the shake powder flavor over the taste of the milk itself. Yeah, you could be paying two dollars more and not even like fucking need yeah. to. Well, all the uh, well, and, and just for your information, all these uh, all, all alternative milks are on sale this week at Giant Eagle. If you need to replenish your supply, <laughs> everybody <laughs> they got a sale on just about everything right now. 
I honestly was only using it for the the protein shakes. Yeah, which I wasn't even really using like while we've been at home because I've had I've been home where like I could throw bacon in the microwave. Yeah, and make, make a little bacon sandwich or something if I got hungry. So it's like I actually was eating real breakfast for for a while, but. I've kind of tried to move back towards fasting these last couple of weeks to uh, try and get my shit back on track. Okay. So, like, I haven't been eating breakfast. And, like, the protein shakes I had the last two days was kind of like... It was like I ate earlier in the day, but I didn't want to eat yet. So, like, rather than eat a full meal, I just went and made, like, a protein shake. So, not having the, the milk saves me, like, 100 calories and saves me, like, $4 in my wallet. Okay. Right on. Right on. So... Like I said, I will keep y'all abreast of, of this situation here. Uh, it is, it, it, you know what I'm saying? I, it, it, it truly, I, uh, it kept me sated. I didn't get hungry until around one o'clock, which is actually the time of my natural, supposed to be lunchtime, as y'all know. That's my time we used to go to lunch. So, but then when, it, when I, when I was what, hungry, it was, I was powerful what, hungry. <laughs> what, uh, what flavor is the one that you're it, eating, it's a chocolate. drinking? Or yeah, whatever. yeah, chocolate. Mm. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How much was that? I, big I don't buy groceries. I pay rent. <laughs> 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 if you ever want to know how the financial situation in my house works out, <laughs> <laughs> just like looking at me. Oh crap! I mean, yeah, this is looking at me real quick. I, I see her. I see her. There. I see her poking out with her bonnet. I do you see, see her bonnet. That's all right. That's all right. I know she's been on her her little natural journey, so she all right. Yeah, she's she is she is on a journey. I'm sure. Uh, but like, I think the cool thing about her hairdresser is like, it's only like mm-hmm. her there, and they don't they don't gotta do nothing to her face, so she could she could go when she yeah. when she feels like it when she when she gets ready to go back. So that's dope. Gabe, man, because you were missing an action last week, and I want to get you caught up. I'm not trying to like just step over you, uh, box, but I think you've had a lot of episode already. I, I want to check in with you and see what's going on in your world. So, bring us up to date. What you want to talk about? What's been popping? So forth, so on. Oh, I had a story all lined up for last week until I got uh, buried in work and had to take the uh, week off yeah. to get caught up. Uh, it was very pertinent to our times, but I don't know if I want to. <laughs> get into that again it's just it's just getting all angry but i will say it's strange how some people will believe a conspiracy theory that democrats drink the blood of children but doesn't believe that uh systematic racism against the uh uh group of people that this country used to enslave can still exist nowadays yeah very poignant i think it's because the blood's more readily available I mean, it seems like a pretty plenty of racism to be had. So you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I I did a little. I didn't push back as much as I should. So maybe maybe I'm in the wrong. But we talked. Uh, my wife got into a discussion with. She got into a discussion. Can you not with, say your in laws? I mean, who listen to this show? We don't. We, do they? Do the world not know uh, your in laws on some bullshit? Like. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't. They don't believe the existence of. Uh, they don't believe the existence of white privilege, and they don't believe that the uh, system is still um, that oppressive and racist. Mm. But they'll believe all sorts of crazy conspiracy theories about, like, you know, blood drinking our Democrats. It's like that one is so wild that I'm just like. I, I don't know. I don't believe in ghosts, and I don't believe in vampires. I don't understand how anybody can, I guess, is the. It's how it gets down. <laughs> I mean, do I... That's like that's what Anthony said earlier. Read the room. Do I push back against someone like that? So the only reason, only reason I would tell you you got the, you got the full green light to light them up is because your wife is right there lighting them up right there. So... <laughs> that's true, but... I mean, I'm still like... I don't know. All these years later, am I still trying to... Impress the side of the family? No, that's the point. Because you're not trying to impress them, and and are neither here nor there on them. I know you. you, you what it is is your kids love their grandpa, and and that is difficult for you to just be like this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? When it's like you can see when you can see the love <laughs> from 
his grandchildren for him. And and so I get it that I know that is a strain in the in situation, but it's like, man, I'm just I don't know, man. I'm lighting everybody up right now. Well, <laughs> I'm uh, I was on the I was on Twitter uh, often and people will who follow me know I'm like, fuck Trump from fuck Trump supporters and blah, blah, blah. But I also read a book recently that also said, like, it's hard to hate. It's hard to hate up close. Yeah. Like, like I can say fuck Trump supporters on, on Twitter and everything, but I can have in-laws that are Trump supporters and, and not not be so adamant about my fuck use to them because, like, well, because I could see the, the their humanity in it as, as opposed to uh, some some stranger over Twitter and I can see their humanity in that my yes my children do love them and they love my children back yeah. so that's a tough one I don't want to just like completely go off but yeah, they were not, not only that like if you go off on them um, yes you might not have to go to Christmas or Thanksgiving but then something else will come up or God forbid, like, uh, you know, something happens to your wife and you have to communicate with them. Like, you will have to communicate with them again. Oh. And, um, I mean, not get along with your, with, with, um, with your in-laws is not an easy thing. Plus, I don't know if, I, look, I don't know if I, this was a realistic worry, but I also, like... And like half their size, they're big dudes, and they love guns. So I don't know if I like if I say something that will uh, piss them off enough to like get my ass beat or, or get a gun pulled mm-hmm. on me. Nah, I don't think. I, I, nah, yeah, no. I don't know. Man. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't believe that to be a concern. I would think, like I said, I would think if they were to do that, that would be the end of their uh, relationship with their daughter and the end their grandchildren. I think your wife would be like, uh, y'all can y'all get the fuck away from me. Never speak to me again. Never speak to my children again. And fuck off if if they were to do that. So I don't. I think you're 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 perfectly safe in in this regard. But like Ant said, man, it's like that's that's true. But that won't that won't get a black eye. That won't uh, erase the black eye off the money maker. Yeah. No, that you definitely you definitely right about that. I feel like in the in the heat of the moment, you never know what'll happen. I've seen people in political debates, and this is a these are two friends and. Uh, one choked the other dude in the middle of a political debate. So I don't know what's gonna I, pop off I, I sometimes. Don't, that there was some drinking involved as well, and they had to. He had to like apologize later, like profusely for that. I don't know that. that. I don't know that. Life. Can't apologize for getting shot. <laughs> what? Mm. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah, don't know I, that life. I gave you doing the right thing. Don't say <laughs> shit. You know how you feel. Like. It, it, they see it, more. There's see, no use to argue with somebody who, like, like, they can only see their point of view from their point like, of view. If it's like over and over, and nobody, if nobody's saying shit, then that shit ain't never getting said. And it's like, I just don't know what the fuck to do yeah, with that point, at, <clears throat> at the end of the day, it's like, they're old and they're going to die. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to say it like that. It was like... Not her younger brother. Mm, her younger brother. Um... I don't know. Like he's been, his mind has been poisoned. Um, I don't know. Well, you know what? I will say something. Like I feel more emboldened to talk to them after the conversation because they were respectful towards me. They didn't talk over me like they talked over my wife. So let's talk about misogyny for a second. There, for real, for real. And uh, Hmm. and she that didn't go unnoticed by my wife. And. I like I hit them with a point that they're like they had no comeback for like there's no racist laws what racist laws are there and I say there's a more severe sentence for crack cocaine than there is for uh, cocaine the difference being uh, crack cocaine found more predominant in minority communities and they're like that's a good point <clears throat> is but the thing the thing about it is like there's a such thing as polite conversation and that's not really polite conversation. Like, I honestly believe in, like, I don't talk. I don't tell people how much money I make. I don't tell people about my religious views, and I don't talk about politics with people at all. 
And like I'll have to stop myself I'm not on that shit with people Like it's Some things You just don't talk about And like In order to keep like You know things kosher That might be something You might have to pick up With, the, with that end of the family <clears throat> Yes it's terrible Like the uh, You know Them talking over your wife And shit That's disrespectful And But At the end of the day It's like Your sanity matters Yeah like, how long can you let people get away with shit, though? Mm, how long can you let people get away with shit? As long as you're, I mean, what what, what good would it do for him to, like, have, like, uh, you know, uh, to keep on having an unconvers- uh, uh, uncomfortable conversation with somebody for no reason? Like, th- that shit can open up Pandora's box. I understand, like, at the end of the day, what good is it going to do, good is going to do gay? To talk to his um, his father in law about it, like name one good thing. It's off his from. chest finally. Yeah, you won't be like holding in all this anger. Are are you are you holding in anger, Gabe? About no, I'm, it? I, I'm cool with it. I mean, I I I, I, I let my venting go uh, down on uh on the on the old Twitter bird. <laughs> I, I kind of feel like. No like, one's biting on, on my bait lately, though. I like <laughs> will respond to people, and they're like they'll just ignore me. Like, oh, what, what's going on? Am I not worthy of? Uh, I need to get more followers. I'm not, not worthy of uh, uh, of arguing with anymore. I think they're they're uh, aware of the fact that there's so many watchful eyes right now that they're <laughs> they're too afraid to get caught. Um, but. I do get through to some people. Yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit. I can get through to them a little bit by little bit. Who knows? Name, name one person who you feel like when you had one of these political conversations with you, they were like, you know what? You changed my heart and my mind. Can you name one person that happened with? Mm, no. <laughs> All right. Well, you. I, I. I feel like you got your answer, then, buddy. <laughs> Doesn't that go against what the world's trying to do right now, though? Um. Okay. So, on a on a grander scheme of things, yes, it goes against what the world is saying. But you have to have a be be able to have a happy home too. At the end of the day, it's like I'm not gonna go out of my way to try to change somebody's mind who is. Like unworthy as, uh, of talking to, like they, they both know their stances and they can be respectful with each other and be like, well, I know this is where you think and I know this is the way I think and that's where we'll leave it. And I don't. And here's the thing, also, like I said, because he, the shit they said was crazy. Well, yeah, like that. That is crazy. But here's the here's the thing with, like he said it with more confidence than I had in any of the any of the non crazy things that I believe in. And it's like, there's always that little thing in the back of my mind, like, well, great. What if they find Hillary Clinton drinking some baby blood one day, and then I look like the asshole? Yeah, it's, it's a difference between, like, trying to, trying, to, trying to talk to somebody and then, like, trying to reason with crazy. I feel, I feel like um, you ain't dealt with enough crazy people in your life, Lunch. I, also, I, I did I also, avoid people. I did also convince yeah. them. Uh, or or point out to them that Diamond and Silk were uh, con artists, but that doesn't mean that they be- that they don't believe the shit that's coming out of their mouths or don't agree with the shit that's coming out of their mouth. I feel like Diamond and Silk they they just are making money. That's an I think that's another. Well, um, they are. Well, they've been caught uh, like early on, and people dredged up early shit in their career. Then they were like. Um, talking about Black Lives Matter and were uh, more pro-black and then that wasn't making them any money and they started making money when they were like uh, go Trump go have you um, watched a documentary on um, they have it on Hulu um, and, and FX um, the, um, excuse me it's the documentary about the lady that the, um, that the road case is based on the yeah, road case. R- 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 the road case. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I heard about that. I didn't. I don't know the details of it. When it comes down to it, they based the case off of, um, off this lady, and like for years and years and years, 
like she was um, pro-abortion mm-hmm. and then like um, <clears throat> the anti-abortion people start paying her and she starts speaking out against it. Hmm. So they can have um, that doesn't change the court ruling but alright. But they were arguing. Makes, they makes were, good commercials. They were arguing the case that they should, and she was fine with that. Watch the documentary; it was pretty good. It was interesting, but I mean, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like um, no, you can't wait on the world to change, but you also got to know who to talk to in order to make changes. I'm I, I'm not gonna talk to you know my uncle Preston. Uh, oh, oh, on how to get the recipe for KFC chicken, that's uh, that's the wrong person to talk to. Can we talk about how autocorrect thinks it knows so much more than uh, the person that's typing? Oh my god! Has anybody ever said ducking, ducking, or go duck yourself? I, 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 only, only for comedy's sake. <laughs> oh my god! Let me uh, let me slip and slide, y'all. And am I the asshole? As you know, that this is now a recurring All segment right. on this on this very show. Yes, we need some more uh, levity. I have you have four options, and we are deep into the show, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let y'all choose one of the four. Am I the ass? Am I the asshole for returning the TV and Switch I bought after my parents said they need to be shared with the family? Am I okay. the asshole for sneaking out of bed at night to play video games while, while my wife sleeps? Mm. Am I the asshole no. for actually actually accidentally getting my boyfriend's Bible ruined? Mm. Am I am, am I the I asshole mean, for asking one of my bridesmaids to cut her hair? So those are your choices. That one, that one, yeah, that one. <laughs> Y'all want the drama? <laughs> well, I mean, the other ones you like the, the titles. So they like... ruined the Bibles. They print a thousand of those fucking things. <laughs> Yeah, it would have to be like some multi generational family heirloom, heirloom for me to even. What I need you to know, and, and uh, here's I'm going to give you the surprise on on both of these on the uh, on the Bible and on this uh, uh, bridesmaid one. Reddit has indeed decided in both these instances these people are indeed the asshole. Well, that makes it more interesting. I think the bridesmaid was the well, one that sounds where the best. Going with it. Am I the asshole for asking one of my bridesmaids to cut her hair? I, hopefully, will be getting married this October to my amazing fiance. We've been together for four years since we were 18. <laughs> Over the past few weeks, my friends and I have done a weekly Zoom call to gossip and discuss details. I asked them to send me their intended, the, their intended hair and makeup for the day, to which they all did. I thought it was a reasonable request. All of them went with for very similar, apart from Madeline. Madeline is the only one in the group who has hair past her chest, and due to the style, she wouldn't be able to do the same style as everyone else. I gently suggested she cut her hair to be able to do the same style as everyone else. She asked if I was being serious, and I said yes, that I was planning on asking, but it made but that it seemed a simple thing to do. My friends were pretty were all pretty outraged over this minor thing, and now Madeline is saying she doesn't even want to doesn't even want to be my bridesmaid. It's only hair; it grows back. Am I the asshole? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say yes because well, first of all, hair growing past your chest—that's a weird way to describe it. I've never heard it described that way before. Does are they doing something with the front? Is that why it matters that it's past her chest? I, I don't know. Let's read. Anyway, some, let's, let's just check out some yeah, of the comments. You're the asshole. Asking people to modify their appearance to be in a wedding party is not a reasonable request. If you want everyone to have a, the same hairstyle, pick one everyone can do. That's that person's uh, thing. Uh, you kind of you kind of lightweight asshole just for expecting everyone to do the hair, same hairstyle too. I mean, you all have matching <laughs> dresses. Is that enough? Uh, you usually that um, you know women do get together and um, have the same hairstyle. I mean, let, let me be fair about this. Um, I hate seeing white people. Um, that's mm-hmm. that's something, huh? 
What? <laughs> I mean, I just don't like saying like, like I don't like generalizing like that, but that's that's something usually because you know you go to a um, you know a black wedding, man. Some one person wear a purple dress, other person got on a black dress. Um, <laughs> they got different hair, different nails. It's, it's it doesn't make a difference. Well, I was gonna say at at, at white weddings they usually do ask. That all the bridesmaids come with the same skin color. <laughs> That's true, too. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, I don't know. The rest of this shit seems whack. I mean, the, the comments are basically, it comes down to, yeah, she's an asshole, and uh, there you go. I'm going to say, yeah. I mean, you're asking someone to modify their appearance, and it's just, it's just hair grows back. That's true, but... You're still an asshole. Yep. I mean, you, you like hair is just one of those things where it's like asking somebody to change it. It's entirely too tied um, to their identity. That's it's it's a it's a bigger yeah. ass than she is making it out to be. Because, like I said, it, uh, it's for oftentimes for women. I'm not saying all women, but oftentimes for women, it, like I said, it is such a such a. A uniquely identifying part of who they are as people that to, to like said who would to ask that of them is 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 just bonkers and so i'm not saying i'm a, i'm a, i mean would i go as far as say he's an asshole mm, i don't fucking know that whole the, you know what made her an asshole it'll grow back it's like come on bro being flippant about it yes yeah, that made her yeah. asshole but all right that one's quick <laughs> for another one all right we got i enjoy you got the bible greatly. You got the sneaking out of bed, and you got the I, I, t- I returned the TV to switch because my parents said I had to share it. Yeah, I want to hear that one. <laughs> that one sounds childish as shit. Let's hear it. <laughs> Am I the asshole for returning the TV and switch I bought after my parents said they needed to be shared with the family? I am 21 female. I moved back temporar- in temporarily with my family because, of, because my college campus shut down. I'm renting the basement of the house and working and living from there. I have a summer internship that pays pretty well. I'll be going back to college in the fall if it reopens and rooming with my friends in an apartment. But back home, I have two siblings, four male and six female. I'm not really I'm not really close to them. We were born so far apart. I was in high school, also working two jobs when my sister was born and I was in college and working when my brother was born. I was always I was just always too busy and we didn't have the experiences a lot of siblings had of growing up together. I get along with them and I babysit sometimes but not so but not so often. Anyway, with quarantine going on, I brought myself a couple of things to pass the time. A switch, you know, a docking station, a couple of controllers, a 60-inch TV. I brought it all with my savings and from my from my well-paying engineering internship I worked last summer. I wanted to put in the put it in the basement where I'm living, but my parents wanted me to put it in the family room so my siblings could share it. I said I want to keep it all in the basement because some of my games aren't kid friendly. I also like to voice chat with friends and we play some of some of what we talk about is either stuff I'd like to keep super private or stuff that's not appropriate for my siblings to hear. Plus I brought the stuff for myself and I was worried my siblings are are young and not very careful with things with and things would break it. My parents said that I was staying in their house, and if I and if I'd be staying in staying, some compromises would have to be made. They wanted me to keep the TV and switch upstairs so we could do things as a family. And because my siblings were very excited to play, they said that was just a house rule, and they and they that I'd have to follow living with family family shares. I said I think that their rule makes sense for my young siblings. They're at an age where they lear- they're learning to play nicely with others. But I'm a lot older than them. I'm buying my toys with my paycheck rather than getting them from Santa. And I don't think the same rules should apply. <laughs> so I returned the TV and switch and all the accessories. I decided I, that I instead I instead save my money for later. Maybe some travel with my friends whenever travel becomes possible again. My parents are upset with my choice and my siblings are tantruming every day. I tried to keep the peace by giving my family a PlayStation 2 my friend was getting rid of. Plus a monitor that I got... <coughs> <laughs> Plus a monitor that I got free a while back. Literally found it on the side of the road and with and with a busted HDMI cord, and got it working by replacing the cord. And my parents were mad that I was giving my siblings free trash. 
My siblings were not also not interested in playing with it. Am I the asshole for turning the switch instead of sharing it with my family? I'll, no. I'll let lunch go first. I would say no because the the, the thing that they said in that that resonated with me the most was, uh, I bought the shit myself. It wasn't a fam familial gift, and like once you're paying rent, you're under no obligation to share a goddamn thing with anybody else in that motherfucker. If your family ain't letting you live in the home for free, you don't owe them shit. Like if you're paying, you don't gotta fucking. Like you, if you want to share, that's on you. But they can't force you to share. If I'm paying you, you got no say over my property. In the words of Bernie Mac, <laughs> fuck them kids. <laughs> I'm trying to find a decent comment, but most people are just like, hell no, what the fuck? My mom tried to throw me out on the street even though I paid half the rent. Joke's on her, I used my stimulus check to get my own apartment and now she broke. That's one count. That's one comment. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to break with the group on this one. Uh, my boyfriend's the same. His mom is throwing him out during this time, and he's been paying her 400 Australian dollars a, f- a fortnight to live there. On top of that, he has to pay to make make to pay and make dinner once weekly to her standards, so nothing cheap. So he can't save money and 150 a quarter for electricity. Both his mom and dad are horrible people and extremely abusive. It will probably be good for him to leave, honestly. This has nothing to do with them out the asshole. What are you doing? These comments are just... <laughs> <laughs> them, yeah, them comments are the asshole. Yeah, no, this, this bitch didn't get kicked out. Indeed. Also, OP is paying rent to live there. It's I'd say she has the right for privacy and to decide where to put her stuff. And then somebody comment beneath that. This is what gets me. She's not crashing there for free. She's paying rent. And yet the parents treat her as if she's a child. If you want to be a sharing family... Share the house for free, <laughs> not just her shiny new stuff. Yeah, that's what Good I'm saying. Point. It's like if I wasn't paying rent, maybe they'd have a legitimate case. But the fact that you're charging me to be there, you don't you don't get to like also sharing my belongings too. You don't you don't get to double dip. <sighs> I got kids about the age of those two young children, so I really feel I really feel for them and their excitement, and it breaks my heart to hear them them sad uh you gotta I, build I'm, that callus up son my youngest yeah. why my, my youngest why, brother wait, wait 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 why do i gotta build that callus up I mean, i'm, I'm explaining it right now my youngest brother tries to get over on me all the time and invite himself to spend the night at my house i don't want kids over here all willy nilly <laughs> I, I i just i just cold shoulder him i'm a sorry dog I have a um, a five and a and that soon to be three year old. They get disappointed in the most stupid shit. Like, oh, you said you were going to cut my waffles in triangles. <laughs> Eat your fucking waffles. <laughs> it's, it's like it's, it's a new for, lesson, and the world don't always go the way you want. And not only that, like those those parents are being terrible parents by being like. No, you buy them a fucking Wii. Or, uh, Nigga, what, car, what's that? A, 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 a snap. Wii, keep a Switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you should buy them a Switch. That's not my responsibility. Yeah, it's like, what what You're, kind of, like, level of finance is, is this family at that they're scoffing at a free PlayStation 2 and monitor? Like, you looking at gift cards nah, in the mouth? What is that, this? That, that was the one petty thing I thought about that story. Yeah, the, a PlayStation Two and a Switch ain't even in the same generation. They're like okay. twenty years apart. Like like her and her uh, brother and sister. <laughs> Why does she have to bring up the fact that she's not close with her bro- younger brother and sister? I mean, because it was very relevant. Like, I'm not close they, with my youngest brother. We're like, I didn't think it was relevant in the story because she's just trying to justify I, like. Oh, I, I don't know it, those kids anything. I think it's relevant in that, like most people, when they hear brother and sister, they think that there's close family bonds. But just because you're brother and sister, that don't mean that you're close. Like, like in her uh, situation, there's a giant ass age gap. She barely knows them kids. The 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 only thing that's keeping me from calling her an asshole is the fact that the parents are making her pay rent. If they were letting her live there, then. I think that's the yeah, major bugaboo I, of the whole thing is the rent situation. Yeah, I, 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 okay, I can't call her an asshole. Are you arguing thing. that, that it, she is wrong to want to keep her shit in her room? 
I just feel for those kids, that's all. Like, they got all excited for the announcement of a Switch and everything. It was an announcement. The parents made the announcement. If I got the PlayStation 4 for me, but I didn't. it's not like I didn't buy a bunch of games for my children. <clears throat> I didn't buy any games for my kids. And I didn't even let them know I had Spider-Man, and they fucking love Spider-Man. It's not theirs. Like, I deserve something for my own. That's true, you do. And for them parents to be like, uh, yeah, why, why the fuck is you telling them about my stuff? Because I'm only going, I'm only staying here for a couple more months. And I'm leaving anyway. So why would you even, like, put that on the pedestal? Yeah, what happens, like, when she would go leave in the fall and then takes the TV and switch with her? It's like, yeah, yeah that, are they going to, like, th- expect her to leave it behind or some shit? Yeah, I think those parents wanted to play that switch for themselves and then thought, like, <laughs> oh, your brother and sister will love it. No, you wanted to keep my 60-inch TV for yourself and my Switch. Because obviously y'all, y'all young enough to still be fucking. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> y'all, y'all knew what this was. Y'all, y'all tried to play me. She should have just kept the Switch and played it on the low. And if she was going to return anything, return the TV. The Switch the you TV? can play like in Correct. the handheld thing, right? <laughs> yeah, was like, she- that's, that's an easy lockup when you leave the house. Or take it with you. And I, where, where did she? She got to get this shit from Walmart. Where did she? What was she able to take it back? <laughs> she might be in another I country mean, too, though. A lot of country, countries have better rules about for returning things than America does. So I see. Yeah. Said the blind man. Yeah. But yeah, um, I feel like those parents. Uh, obviously, it got to be a step parent or something like that because, like, you know, that who who had a twenty year old and a six and a four year old. Maybe Dad, just uh, took a Dad break. Dick still work, and he met a hot new <laughs> fine mommy. My mo- my mom. Oh yeah, I was, um, I, yeah. I was like twenty one when my little brother was born. <laughs> oh, I, okay. I should say my youngest brother. <laughs> well, yeah, I kind of feel like th- those parents are like extreme assholes. The only close to assholey thing she did was like offer them a PlayStation Two. <laughs> Some free shit she found that, in the garbage. She found the monitor. She didn't. She, the, the PlayStation Two. Somebody else didn't want anymore. It's still somebody's no, garbage. Not necessarily garbage. Mm, yeah, really. <laughs> nah, people. If she, did, pe- if she turned it down, it was ended up in the garbage. Pe- people love vintage shit. All like all these old these old systems, man. Like they're hard to find, and people like crave shit for parts and, and yeah. nostalgia and shit. All right, all right. Some all right. Of, some of the old games aren't like backwards compatible, so like you can only play some of the old shit on those systems. They have value. Yeah, those kids were caught in the crossfire of this whole thing. Shit, no, no they, they weren't. weren't. Guess what? They they the lesson learned. <laughs> don't don't it's depend on your parents because they shitty. That's the lesson they just learned in that disregard. Like, man, my parents is awful because they tried to force her to fucking let me play shit that wasn't mine. <laughs> They also learn not to give any uh, kidneys or any other kind of uh, uh, bone marrow or shit to that older sibling if they need it. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like, where, say, for example. Um, Remember when you, you would, uh, I asked you to let me play your Switch? Well, <laughs> maybe you could take some of that Switch money and buy, find yourself a liver. You, are you trying to tell me that, like, if I end up getting sick, that my youngest brother ain't going to help me out because I wouldn't wipe his ass for him when he was six? He might remember it. It might factor into the decision making. If he's on the fence, what's pushing him over? Well, I'm glad I don't live One my, night- my life by what it could have should have. Yeah, I mean, it's some like I, I did been- buy me that sh- that, that milkshake that one time. That just, it's those little things. No, nah. like Man. I kind of I live my life by this. Like I know I'm not a perfect person. I live by the shit I do and then just keep going. What can I do? Like, I know I don't do everything right, but I certainly don't do everything wrong either. As as someone who has a sibling with a similar age gap, I would do the same exact first thing of this person if I was in that situation. If I was staying there temporarily, paying rent, I would not put my shit in for public use like that without being consulted first. I'm not sharing my cereal, let alone my TV. 
all it's gonna, all it's gonna do is end up with broken Twitch controllers and, and possibly a broken TV. Fuck all of that. No, thank you. She is not the. I did get a broken TV off of a child, but that child was three at the time, not four. It's different too because those are your kids. <laughs> you're you you're expected to like care about their feelings and and all that. Like, I mean, like honestly, like if my little brother was upset about like me not getting him something. Fuck him. I, like, yeah, he's my brother, whatever. But like, I'm not going to be held hostage by the feelings of a child. I like I have kids and. I don't like some stuff. I don't feel. I don't feel. I can't be forced to feel bad about it because, I mean, like I told them, I might like, buy y'all no more toys because y'all break shit too much, and I and I met that shit too. Someone has to be the toys. voice of reason and strength, you know. And it ain't gonna be the kid because they don't know how. I, I, them parents is just terrible. I, if I was like. Um, yeah, I would ride on them, on them parents if I was her. <laughs> Fuck them parents. That was it. That was some. That was a whole like ten pounds of bullshit in a five pound bag. I can't believe that they're making her pay rent. Like, if I was their parent and like this was a situation my kid was in, I'm not gonna charge my kid rent to like obviously, crash at my place. One? Yeah, that's really young. Obviously, them parents is broke as fuck because they ain't get, they ain't got a TV upstairs, and they ain't got a switch. Like, and they got I, two kids. I guess it would be like a different situation if you were like planning on living there forever, and like you were kind of a nuisance or a drain on my utilities and shit. But if you're my child and I love you, and you just need a place to crash for a couple months until like the situation gets better and you can continue on what you were doing, I feel like it's my obligation as a parent. To like just give you a helping hand because you're my kid and I love you, but like for you to milk money out of your kid like that when you know the situation, it's not like your kid's fucking up and like doing some some shady shit or whatever. It's like just the circumstances of the world, and it's like you're taking advantage of your kid monetarily, and then you're trying to take advantage of your kid like materially. It just seems fucked up all around. I agree. Fuck them parents. Fair enough, people. Like, I don't think it's out of bounds for them to, like, expect her to, like, chip in with chores or, or like, helping cook or, or maybe doing a little babysitting or something if she's going to be there. But to just, like, have her pay rent and then demand her shit on top of it. Like, nah, fuck that. Yeah. Fuck them parents. All right. That, so the parents are the asshole. Yeah. And the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious, people! Um, uh, I have uh, rewatching and then for the third season, watching for the first time the uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender. It is uh, amazing. It is on Netflix. If you fuck around with some, uh, I guess I don't know, American style anime, I would tell you to get down with that shit. It's it's been a really excellent rewatch. I've been it's been very good. Real, 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 real happy with it. And so. Did you guys know that they made a horror movie version of Fantasy yes. Island? They, I rented it last night you think? and watched it. It was okay. passable. Like mm-hmm. I didn't like the re- the reviews on it weren't good, and uh, but I ended up like it was a fine watch. Like I, I wouldn't yeah. call it a classic, but it wasn't amazing either. Know. Like, but they definitely left it open to potentially do more yeah. if they so choose. Because apparently, like, the movie only costs like seven million to make, but it grossed like forty-two million, even though like everyone says it wasn't good. <laughs> but uh, Michael Pena was uh, the the guy Mr. who ran Roar? the island. Say word. And, uh, nice role. Yeah, and um, one of the the dude from uh, Veronica Mars was in it. Um, the black dude? No, the white guy. And uh, the Jim uh, Jin Yang from Silicon Valley was in it. Oh, okay. And then, yeah, like, he's been in a lot of stuff lately. He's in that new, um, the new um, show on Netflix, with, uh, from the Office people. Mm. Michael Rucker was in it. Was he racist yeah. in that? Not as far as I could tell. Uh, well, he's not playing to a strong <laughs> suit, is what you're telling me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I watched. I watched a lot of movies the last couple of days. Like I watched uh, Hotel Artemis, 
Uh, I watched some Elijah Wood movie, uh, Come to Daddy. Uh, I watched um, Anne Hathaway and uh, Rebel Wilson. How is that? Hustlers. I, I, I came to the realization yesterday that uh, Rebel Wilson is just Australian Melissa McCarthy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa like, McCarthy is actually a good actress, though. But like, they put her in the in the same roles when it comes to these comedic movies, where it's always like some stupid, ridiculous bullshit, and she just like you know falls her way through it. It's the same shit with Rebel Wilson. She's in all these movies, and she always plays some outlandish, ditzy, con artisty, airheaded woman. And, and I'm like, ugh. Anne Hathaway's still hot though, so. Yeah, there was that. Respect to it. Vanessa uh, ended up just breaking down and paying for HBO Max. And uh, uh, I have a 30-day free subscription coming with my tablet purchase today. Excellent, excellent. And so she watched uh, Babe the other day. Y'all remember Babe? I don't know if y'all uh, remember Babe. Oh, yeah, I saw that in her Instagram Babe story. in the city? And uh, she watched it. And then I'm, you know, I'm sitting over here, over here and I was like kind of watching it uh, too. And we were both like, man, Babe is a really good movie. And I go, yeah, I, I, I seem to remember Babe being super popular and, and you know, a, a, a big enough deal. It and got nominated for an Oscar. Babe got nominated for seven Oscars. Seven? That'll yeah. be big. That'll and, be. It won, and it won a Golden Globe and so forth. So Babe is a highly decorated film. And as it turns out, it's a damn good movie. Uh, I would tell you, if you got if you have HBO Max, it's on there right now. Give it a watch. Do you remember its competitor? No, was there... Babe in the hood? No, there was another big movie, <laughs> uh, Gordy. Yes, I remember Gordy. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, man, what the fuck? It was always I, uh, like that. It was all. It was like that back in the day, wasn't it? It was a uh, Gordy Life, and Babe, Ants, Deep Bugs Impact, Life. Armageddon, Armageddon. Yeah, man. Uh, Dante's in, Dante's Peak and uh, Volcano. Yeah. I uh, I also watched Crazy Rich Asians the other night. Name than that. I'm sorry, you, what was that box? I said I, I finally also watched Crazy Rich Asians. That movie wow. had so much hype. Yeah. And uh, I didn't really understand the hype. And then I watched it and I was like, oh, okay, so the hype is just because this movie is just full of Asian people. Mm. Did you watch uh, uh, Always Be My Maybe? No, that was the, the Randall Park and Ali yeah. Long movie, right? Yeah. Uh, that is the one I tell you to watch. Well, I'd have to get Netflix for that. Do you um, not have Netflix? We haven't had Netflix here since January. We'll take care of that after. Yeah, good I, lord. I, uh, I let my HBO go the other day. Uh, yeah, yeah. You said it was it was up at the end of the month. Yeah, so I, I canceled that, and uh, I've been watching a lot of Guys Grocery Games the last couple of days. I watched two seasons of Guys Grocery Games within like six days. Yeah. And those aren't those aren't quick. Each episode is like forty five minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Space Force is also amazing. So uh, amazing is too strong. It's it's really it's very enjoyable. Again, Netflix. Uh, Steve Carell, Tony uh, Newsom, uh, Tony Newsom, uh, John Malkovich, and the dude uh, that Lush just said. What you do? Oh, uh, do- Jin, y- Jin Yang. Yes. Oh, uh, okay. He's got a special on uh, Amazon, a comedy special that just came out like a couple weeks ago. Uh, for the life, of, I feel bad now that I can't remember the dude's real name. Hmm. Well, hey, that guy, comedian. <laughs> so, but uh, that's what that's what's been popping, and uh, that's that. We'll call that tease little segment of this. Besides, you know, cursing out the fucking world for you know being a bunch of racist pricks, and uh, cops being super salty that they can't just kill people with uh, with impunity. Sorry, I'd like you to protect and serve me because my taxes pay for your ass, just like the white people's taxes pay for your ass. But you know, I guess I can't ask for that because I'm black. We're going to put the brakes on this motherfucker and we'll come back and do it again next week. I promise you we will. Uh, housekeeping, standard your standard affair. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share the show wherever possible. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, to YouTube and Twitch channel, and follow us on Twitter at Skimpod, S-K-I-M-P-O-D. I just put a new video up on YouTube today. Did a little instant premiere. I love uh, doing those. They, they're fun because they do a big countdown and stuff. And like, hey, here we go. And then I just sit and wait for YouTube to tell me how many copyright claims I'm going to have on my video. <laughs> I got four for this one. Not strikes, though. Claims. Claims are different. Claims means they can get paid and they're happy with it. <laughs> strikes is, uh, they ain't cool. So don't get a strike. People tell you that. 
If you want to support the show financially and you have a few bucks to toss our way, you can join our Patreon. We're members at the $5 and above tier get extra content each month and early access to our new shows. We also have merch available over at tpublic.com slash user slash stays crunchy and milk, all one word. Uh, I was looking at uh, getting maybe getting a... Uh, they have the zip-up hoodie. But then I'm like, I don't know. Also, uh, apparently they have masks now. If you want to rock a stage for your milk mask, it's there as an option. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> it's 10 Just, bucks, though. You know what I'm saying? Plus shipping. So, you want to rock a stage for your milk mask. How affordable? <sighs> Is it, though? Because I feel like they shot. They feel like they should be uh, getting in your ass. You know what I'm saying? What a bargain. <laughs> <laughs> And now feel free to give us a call at 216-302-8763. That's 216-302-8-POD. Promise you we'd love to hear from you. Have a little chat, especially after this week. You know what I'm saying? After these last couple of weeks, man, I, I think it would be uh, quite, quite, uh, quite interesting to hear from uh, you, the listener, to let us know uh, what you think about what we, cho- what we talk about on, on this particular program. Uh, that man over there to my internet left is Tatum216. Yeah. To my internet right is Lushbox2099. In the internet ether, because he killed his video, <laughs> is the real ODP. I may call you a child of God, but I may call you the child of God that uh, uh, that the uh, uh, God makes you pay the rent, even though you're only 21 and have no place to live. <laughs> oh, you my say. God. Uh, uh, rest in power, George Floyd. Rest in power to all those names that we don't know who have uh, just been struck down by police officers who think that they can just kill and not give a good goddamn. I am the internet's Tayrock713. You've just been podcast to it. I hope you loved it. Peace. Bye now. I love you. You used to be beautiful.